Having more than 10 years in tuning, you know, uh, diagnostic, forward and all that, would you consider yourself like one of the best tuners for Ford? Damn, that's I mean, fucked up. I'll say it for you, yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I would consider myself a competent tuner. You know what I mean? I would never say, I, I don't, I'm not the kind to be like, I'm the best. Yeah. And though I probably should. I'm just kidding. There's, uh, there's a lot of great tuners out there. Like, I, I like the, the guys, you know, Lund Jr., Lund Senior, they're great, great, great dudes. I like those guys a lot. Uh, Adam Brunson, Tune Plus, he's awesome. There's, you know, the guys who aren't really popular, like Eric from Pro Charger, he does all their tunes. Yeah. But he does a great job. He makes carb tunes that live, you know, 50, 60,000 miles a car car legal and there's guys like that there's a lot of good tuners out there i mean i definitely think i'm top tier because you'll see like a lot of i don't even know how you describe them people come and go dudes yeah. come in they'll come and go you know you'll see Fly a pop up i'm tuning cars and you, who the fuck is this guy and the biggest thing that i can say for my own benefit is like i had the experience of doing tens of thousands of mustangs so like you're, you're your results are going to be better. Your time spent is going to be better, and it's probably going to run better. <laughs> Guys, you know we got the Ford GT here. Make sure you tune in and watch the full episode. Peace. Welcome back to Go Hard Podcast. I'm your host Noel. Man, guys. This guy, I just want to say something. This guy flew in all the way from Florida, Palm Beach, Florida. Is that correct? Palm Beach, Florida. Man, it's an honor to have him on the podcast. I heard he was one of the best four tuners in the game. So you know we had to get him on. Simple as that. Um, we had Boyd. You watch Boyd's podcast. You know, you know Rob tuned all of his cars, all of his Fords. Um, he's done Yellow Jackets cars. We had him on the podcast. He's on multiple people's cars. He's been in the game for seven to eight years on the Ford. Is that correct? Yeah, about Roughly? right. Roughly? Yeah. yeah, I'll say that's so. Okay. Sure. Close um, enough. <laughs> so we don't have Ocel here. He might not be on the podcast no more. He might. It doesn't matter. But we're here right now. Thank you again to Boyd. Badass shop, like always. You know, got the trophies in the background again. We are at Sealy, Texas at Bombera's Performance. If you need anything done to your hot rod... You can hit them up on Instagram, Facebook, and um, what was the address again, boy? <laughs> uh, 6513 Southeast I-10 Frontage Road, Sealy, Texas. Boom. In the, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. In the, in the middle of nowhere. In the country. Nowhere, but. I, I thought it was lost on the way here. I was like, yo, am I going to get like, it was like the hills have eyes shit out here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm afraid, but. There's not even a corner store like close I to tried, you. I tried, yeah. I bought these beers, and the guy was like, uh, you're not from around here, are you? Like, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Texas, man. Welcome, yeah. man. Welcome to Texas. Listen, honestly, you know. I actually, I came from LA. Yeah, yeah. LA. yeah. So uh, I was in Vegas for uh, the Super Bowl, and like, uh, I was at Shaq's Fun House on that Friday night, and we stayed there for a few nights and had a good time, and then uh, I had to do some business, and then uh, I flew to Vegas for a couple days. I'm sorry, LA for a couple days, and swung back through here on my way back to Florida. I can't even tell you how many times. I love it here. Nice. I mean, I love Houston's always nice. When you get out here a little bit, I kind of get a little afraid for my life because, you know, <laughs> you don't know nobody. You know what I mean? You it's know a little me. creepy, you're good. right? You're good. I know yeah. him. That's it. Yeah. Imagine me walking to the corner store. It's like, hey, you from around here? I know Boyd. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're good. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Leave me alone. Right. Yeah. But I love it out That's here. all you got to know is Boyd. Yeah, yeah. literally. I mean, in these parts. He's got yeah. the keys to the city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got Boyd again. He's going to be, you know, right here next to Rob, co host. My you know, sidekick. Sidekick co-host. Sure. You know. I got his back. Yeah. yeah, he got his back. But he's going um, to help me out if I start messing things up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what he's here for. He's going to say, nah, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, he's easy. He's easy. Yeah, yeah. Don't You're turn it up that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be Not, a good one. Yeah. It's going to be a great one, guys. Make sure you tune in. We're going to talk about uh, Rob Shoemaker, the tune maker. Pretty much, you know, tuning the Fords, you know, how he started tuning. Entry to pretty much the automotive industry. The future for him. You want know my yeah. entire story? Huh? Yeah, the the entire Rob Schumacher story. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Well, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get as much as I can. Yeah. I don't yeah. know your Never age. Been Look, told. I don't know your age, but we're gonna try to jam it in an hour and Listen, thirty minutes. That's not that hard. That's, uh, I'm 32. Okay, I'm not that old. But yeah, 32 I've, years in an hour and thirty minutes. My so. liver's like 510 years old, but whatever. <laughs> With that being said, let's get it for Rob Schumacher, man. You gotta clap, boy. You gotta clap. I'm, I'm, I'm clapping. clapping. I'm clapping. It's Modelo time. Yeah, it's Modelo time. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Rob. I'm Rob Shoemaker, uh, the infamous Ford tuner, uh, Shoemaker Performance currently. Uh, love me some coyotes and uh, 
having fun, making shit go fast. You know, love my customers and it's been a, a hell of a ride and it's only going to get better from here. You just did a little tour soon, right? Like visiting some of your, your uh, yeah, yeah, shops I do, that like, you tune? So primarily f as for last year and this year will probably be the same. I will travel around a lot because I like to be in person with things. So I will go from spot to spot. I mean, last year, I mean, I did, I was in Puerto Rico, Nevada, uh, Texas, uh, Arizona, God, where else? Even Tennessee, Mar I mean, you name it, I was probably there. I'd you were in Maryland for a minute. Yeah, I spent probably five days at home last year, what it felt like. It was great. Nice. I'll do it again this year, watch. Is that your, uh, like, your customer appreciation or customer service? That There's you a lot of dealers that I deal with. Uh, like, for example, like, uh, Shelby America. So they do the KR, right? Nice. The K they make a KR special edition you can buy that has, like, upgrade injectors and stuff like that and a smaller pulley, and I do stuff for them, so I'll go out there and do stuff for them occasionally. But most of it's remote, but... I always like the show face, and it's a good excuse to go to Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to mention that, too. Like, the, the, you buy a Shelby GT500, it's got his two yeah, in it already. Likely, yeah. If you really? bought, if you bought yeah. the upgrade KR package, right, because they do that upgraded KR package deal, uh, and I deal with, uh, you know, Gary over there, Mike Snow, and all those guys, and great dudes, and they do a, the facility over there. I don't know if you've ever been there or not. It's, at, like, this place is beautiful, but it's absolutely incredible. There's Mustangs, like, as far as the eye can see. And Damn. just tons of parts and <laughs> slapping them together like a it's like an assembly line. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Everything. It's like you're uh, like a kid in a candy store for you, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, doing Mustangs for a living has really killed Mustangs for me. There's still like a small child. I mean, that does love Mustangs, and being in there is like a kid in a candy store. You're right. It's yeah. it's uh, overwhelming. So when they get that package, it comes from. I mean, it comes with his tune. Yep. Is that like a all out, max, you know. No, there's still more on the table. We, okay. we keep it kind of safe. So what's been, like, let, uh, for example, I just did this guy, Les Stroud, right? Uh, he's, like, a famous gun maker, I believe. Um, so he did a, a GT500. It's a KR package. It's got upgraded injectors and rails, and it's got a smaller pulley. So, I, you know, I use PCM tech software for stuff. So that he has two maps he can pick from on his ECU. He can do a 93 or 91, whatever he's riding around on. If he wants the race gas, he can... Flip it over and boom, he's got the race gas. Nice. So he, that car made, I think, 1,030 on MS109. But I mean, honestly, that's plenty for what they're looking for. Yeah. 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 Nice. Um, tell us a little about your background. Your, when did you get into cars? And <sighs> Good question, actually. Um, <laughs> I don't even know I'll, this. Yeah, this is good. My father worked for Ford as a service manager as I was growing up. And uh, I was always around Fords. I mean, I can tell you the first time I saw a 2000 Cobra R, I can tell you my first ride in an 03 Cobra when they first came out. And at that point, I was, like, stuck. You know, I always loved Fords, and my dad was a Ford guy, and I was stuck with that. Uh, I grew up 10 minutes on the road from Macro Raceway in New Jersey. They recently closed. And, I mean, we would go there. As, my dad would take me there every Friday for testing tune. We'd sit in the bed of the truck and watch cars, stuff like that, you know. And it was, you know, looking back, uh, it really, like, stuck me in this direction, it feels like. Damn. And uh, I was a mechanic for a long time. I worked for Toyota. Uh, I was a tech and eventually, uh, I worked for a performance shop, Fonz Performance in Sickleville, New Jersey, on the side. I was doing all their installs. We would build engines, boat motors, you know, all types of crazy stuff like that. Nice. Um, and we started, you know, doing some of the Mustang stuff when it came out. And I was doing dabble in the LS stuff a lot because we were doing, you know, cam swaps all the time and stuff like that. And I tuned some of the big stuff threes, and I think Speed Pro or Fast back then, or whatever it was called. And uh, I really wanted to get my hands in the Coyote when it came out. So I think like 2000, late 2011, 2012, uh, we had customers drop them off. And I think Eric uh, from HP probably just had got it done around there or whatever. I, I don't know the exact timeline. And I started obsessing, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I would sit in the diner for hours and fuck with everything I could think of that yeah, would make yeah. power. And just to see what everything did, you know, it was like kind of like poking it to see what it would do. And uh it's basically where that started for the Coyote stuff. And since then, I've just been, you know, going crazy. I mean, I quit Toyota, and I quit that other shop, and I ran a shop for a while and did tuning on my own um, through that shop. And uh, I did that probably, what, like, a year or two, maybe? I don't even know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one day, I did a GT350 for this gentleman named Mitchell Page. Uh, and it made, like, F194 stock engine. It made, like, 1,300, some crazy Damn. number, right? And uh, I guess it caught the attention of maybe, I think, my... Uh, Ken, Ken Bionis, um, at PBD. At, he just broke off from London. He was doing that. 
And uh, he reached out to me and asked me if we would possibly think about teaming up maybe because he needed like help. And uh, I went down to Florida, went down to Miami, had a good time, and then I met him. And then we decided, you know, let's just do it. It was a good opportunity for me. And I always had admired Ken growing up because I had remember I, I'd watched Ken race at NMRA years before that at Acura Raceway. And I remember seeing him in the finish uh, in the and then what is it? The winter circle. Winter circle, right? There's a picture on his wall in his house. Well, he, I don't know if he still has it or not. Of him in the winter circle, and I was like, I've seen this picture get taken. You know, what I mean, it's really yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I moved down here with him, uh, and we basically we built Palmistano into an empire almost, and uh, we did really, really well for a lot of years. And you know, eventually, you know, I just kind of got overwhelmed with everything, and I was like going through some so much stress and just having a hard time. I eventually just split off, and I was like, I'm gonna take some time off. I took like a month or two off, and basically now. At this point in my life, I have the opportunity to control my workload and how much I want to do, and I can kind of keep myself relaxed and right. really go back to enjoying it. Because at, at that time, I think at the very end, we were doing so many Mustangs a month. I mean, I would wake up, go into work, and then I would just do tickets all day, and I would do dinos all day, and then I would go home, and there's two more tickets. And I, it was the point where I had no life, and I was miserable, and uh, I was just having a hard time. So, yeah. yeah. But, you know... I feel bad uh, about it, definitely, because I, lo I love everyone over there. I have nothing bad to say about those guys, uh, but I think it was the right move for me. And it probably didn't end the best in the best terms, but you know, I still want the best for those guys, of course. But today, here we are. <laughs> for sure. So you, you never got into the 4.6 or 5.4? No, that was before my time, really. And remember, I'm, I was born in 91, so like, I really got into tuning hard of the Coyote stuff, like 2011, 2012, and that was all Coyote. I mean, yeah, yeah. Ken had done, Ken's famous for doing the Cobras and two valves and stuff like that. So I, if ever it came in, Ken would do it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to deal with it. Yeah. So it was easy. I didn't, I didn't even know, I didn't even know that, but you're, you self-taught on the tuning. A lot of it. Yeah. A lot yeah. of it. Yeah. Obviously you get pointers and oh, stuff. Oh yeah. But. Well, Ken would help me out with stuff when I was getting there. But I mean, a lot yeah. of it was at one point, Ken was so busy running the business. I was doing most of the tuning. I was doing everything. And, uh, a lot of it is trial and error. A lot of it's spending a lot of time perseverating over stupid shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? To do the best you can possibly do. And it's hard sometimes. I mean, there's been nights where I'm up till three or four o'clock in the morning with a customer trying to get shit right. And uh, but once you figure it out, you know, you know the tricks for next time. I mean, my biggest, I think my, one of my biggest, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Qualities is that people can hit me up and yeah. like, I have this problem. And I'm like, oh, I ran into that problem. Here's what you got to do. Oh, that's awesome. Here's how you fix it. Damn. Yeah, been there and done that. <laughs> I've texted him at three in the morning. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like how how is the uh, communication? I mean, obviously, it's Boyd the says it's, it's the like it's oh, like, Boyd's on another level. Like most customers that I deal with will get back most of the time in twenty four hours. Not this week. I've been traveling, but like most yeah. of the time it's twenty four hours. I'm I try to limit like I said, limit my workload so I can spend the time to give quality to right. people, and that's the biggest thing of why I don't really want to hire anyone or have any help, yeah. uh, just because like. At the end of the day, I want to be the one to, to do everything. So that way I know that this person's happy, everything's good. They get the, what they want out of their program and everything's perfect. Yeah. They know who to point the finger at. Is exactly. <laughs> Listen, if shit fucks yeah. up, it's my fault. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. But like Boyd will text me at 3 o'clock in the morning like, yo, I got this car. You want to do it? I'm like, hell yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll roll out of bed naked and just roll over <laughs> my computer. I'm like, let's do this. That's, boy. Like, that's yeah. like we went the NA car. It was yeah. like we were literally at the track sometimes. It'd be like 1, 2 in the morning. And I, I mentioned it before. It was like. I'd be like, yo, I think it would be a little bit faster if we could just make it shift a little bit sooner on the two, three or whatever. Yep. And he's like, got you, boom, sends it. And it's like, yeah, it went faster. And then, you know, we, we did a lot of trial and error, but it was a, it was all late night stuff. Like, it, it was all yeah. late nights. I remember yeah. the first the the first phone call I got about Boyd's car. I was like, man, well, call me like two in the morning. And he's like, <laughs> hey, uh, boy needs help. Can you like help us out? I was like, I just got over the bar. I was like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I am tuned up, ready to ride. And I think that night we went pretty fast the first time. We made a bunch yeah. of changes. We gained a lot of like knowledge on the setup pretty fast. You right. know what I mean? We were able yeah. to dial in pretty quick. It was it was just a lot of like it was kind of trailblazing on the on the Mustang platform. Both like like I was telling you last time is the OTR and the the M5 and Nitros. Like nobody was really doing that. I've heard some guys did. Some guys have done it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, whenever I was doing it, I I didn't know anything, and I just had hit him up and was like, "Yo, you want to try it?" And he was like, "Yeah, let's do it." That's old school stuff. Yeah, Damn. yeah, that's the like yeah. good shit. Yeah, right. The Honda game. <laughs> Are you familiar with the Honda game? A little bit, mm. a little bit. Listen, I respect those Honda guys. Trust me, man. Those them K twenties, K twenty fours, bro. Them things fucking move. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. You're making all this power, eleven thousand RPM, no problems. Hell yeah. You know? And they weigh like they weigh nothing. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> they weigh as much as a living room couch. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Pick it up yeah. the same way. Literally the same yeah. way. Two guys, they pivot, you know, the yeah, mean yeah. pivot. <laughs> when you started tuning the coyote, what issues did you encounter at first? I mean, there's a lot of little shit as you, like, as, this is a big thing. As far as, like, platforms that come out, right? So the Gen 2 come out, there's a lot of problems because a lot of things aren't defined. You don't know what's what. There's things that you can't see in just the generic age of tuner software that is limiting you. And you're like, oh, so you're trying to find stuff like that. Um, that's basically it until you figure it out, you know, and eventually we'll add it all back in once they figure out you need it, you know. Right. Uh, but that's usually the biggest problem. It's like right now the 24 don't look into it, so we can't even do anything. But we're at their mercy until this is done, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I hope it's soon because I'm itching. Yeah. <laughs> itching to get the thing on the track, like, fast. What do you, what do you, can you expect out of it? To, uh, it's, I expect to see easy eight-second cars. The Gen 4, or I don't Damn. know, let's call it Gen 3.5, okay? It's not a Gen 4. It's basically a Gen 3 with, like, a slightly revised camshaft and maybe a different solenoid port, but nothing really crazy, and then the dual threat, the dual plenum intake, which they mm. only did for emissions, mind you, not because of horsepower, so don't even say it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. People, <laughs> I, I, I made a meme when they launched that intake, and I was like, please, do not fucking bother me asking me how to install that. twin throttle buys on your fucking bolt-on <laughs> S197. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. It's not going to make more power. Please stop asking. Yeah. yeah I remember thought, that. You thought, it, you thought it looked cool? It's all right. I it thought makes, it, like it makes it more of a shit. headache. Huh? But it makes it more of a headache for like the, yeah. the builder. I understand why they did it. Like It makes perfect sense because... you know It looks like ricer to me, though. Yeah. You, know? you know, the GTRs have it. The Lambos have it. Well, obviously, they have two different banks, right? So, Ferrari. But like Ferraris, they all have it. And that looks kind of cool. And it kind of gives you that little bit of wow factor. But yeah. in reality, the carbon trap filter was limiting their horsepower. So they couldn't make the power. But they had to have the carbon trap filter that's mandated by the EPA. Mm. So if you can't get enough flow, what do you do? Yeah. That's like a throttle body. Damn. Then they had to go and write all that code to write two throttle bodies, and what a nightmare. I feel bad for whoever to do that. What other, um, besides Boyd and, you know, obviously the Cali guys, you know, who, who, where's other big shops you tune? Um, Brand Speed, Shelby America. Well, yeah, yeah, you said, you said those already. Um, yeah, Brand Speed's a big one. There's DSG in uh, Texas. I mean, there's a lot of guys, Texas Pickle Performance. Ugh, there's like, dudes in. You had a guy in Colombia? Yeah, I got a guy in Colombia. I have a big shop, uh, our performance in Dubai area. Or I think it's... Is he, you do do some uh, Kuwait? Yeah, Kuwait. Uh, Yusuf, he's Kuwait. I have guys all over the place. Damn, that's better. Was it Dubai? It was Bahrain, yeah. Our performance is from Bahrain. Awesome dude. But like, those guys are my favorite to deal with. Honestly, because it's like, they'll hit me up and their time zone's weird. And they respect that. And they're like, hey, listen, I know it's weird. But I'll get them a tune back and I'm like... It's like, hey man, it's good, and they're done. They don't. Mm -hmm. They'll race that thing until the motor blows. They don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds like boys to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I mean, like I told you, whenever we did mine, is like the base falls are like ninety nine percent of the time are perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's it took like, a long time to get here. I just, yeah, I just yeah, did, yeah. I just did an, another. I just finished up another car. I was telling him uh, we did like Frankenstein heads and some other stuff on it, and it was like it doesn't even need a revision yeah. we're gonna revise it but it's yeah, like yeah. It, we'll make it, a couple changes it could it could live where it was at it's like i mean yeah. it's just well, the tunes are like out the box perfect yeah <laughs> i mean it's like time. i said a long time to get here right the 18's yeah. been out for five yeah was it 2024 yeah. holy shit six years yeah. but it came out in 2017 and we like we spent so much time and fought so many times to fix issues with it and everything like that and you know, a lot of that comes from the repetitiveness of doing it. Like, at one point, I think we did, like, 600 Mustangs a month or something, some absurd number at mm -hmm. PBD. We were, you know, crushing cars. It was crazy. Uh, but now, like I said, it's nice because I can limit what I do. And at that point, I can really, like, spend time with Boyd when he's at the track and, like, dial that shift point in and really go hard. Not for everyone, let's be honest right, here. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's, like, certain yeah. people, obviously, that, are, like, you know, I, I feel like whose programs are going to excel. The guy on the corner with the JLT and long tubes wants to be the fastest at the track. Yeah. Hold on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that was the, the big part of it, too, is I think whenever we were doing the NA car, was like, I just kept telling him, I was like, I don't care what happens to this thing. Like, let's try something. Let's, let's try it. Yeah. And uh, so we were experimenting and like it, with 
Me, I didn't care because I had other motors. I had other things that I could replace yeah. it with. There, I could fix it. And he didn't care like, either. He's not lying. He's like, blow <laughs> this fucking thing up. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like you know your normal customer or whatever. They're not. Yeah. They're not down to do it like that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these guys. I mean, being in the Mustang community, right? These 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 guys daily drivers. So you have to be careful. Be mindful at least of these guys can't afford to fix it if it breaks type of thing. So yeah. it's a lot of your lower end NA guys, but you got to make sure they're taken care of because that's your bread and butter. You yeah. know what I mean? And those files have to be perfect off the box. That's why they're all like, oh, the basic ones, I make them as clean cut perfect as possible. It might not be the most aggressive 93 turn out of the box, but like it's not going to have a problem. Like I'm working on doing, you know, car B EPA certified stuff with that file. You know oh, what I mean? That way it's 100% gotcha. legal. That way these customers can still get them and be 100% legal. I do have a car BO, I don't, don't want to say car BO, but I do have a 49 state uh, legal tune that I do. It's for Hellion. Uh, they only have the only twin turbo kit ever certified. Nice. And really? I the, yeah, I did the calibration for them, and it passed 49 state, working on California right now, but that's a whole other... Boggy? California sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. Well, it's like, hey, you jumped through like 30 hoops to get here. Here's 30 more. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Helen makes the kit... Hell, Hellion makes a 100% carb legal kit. Carb legal kit. Well, I will say, we'll call it carb, but it's 49 state legal, yeah. Damn. I don't know if carb qualifies as 50 state, but 49 state legal. And what year is that? Uh, all Gen 3s. Okay, all Gen 3s. Yeah, okay. it'll be Gen 2s probably next year or this year. We have to just, it's the same engine family, so you can get the cert. It's just a, a little bit of a, mm -hmm. you know. Actually, I just installed one of those, and I didn't even know you were behind that, but it did have it all over the box, carb legal. Like, Damn. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it, they just bolt right up, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's got stock hats and everything. Yeah. So you can buy the kit with where it bolts up to like stock headers. Yeah. Or you can buy their upgraded four to one header kit. And their headers are nice. I will give yeah. Hellion this. I mean, some people may knock Hellion for certain things, but like I've taken more Hellion kits off the shelf and made 2,000 horsepower than like I can ever imagine. Really? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. Like yeah. a set of 64, 66s, they're upgraded manifold, they're four inch inner, uh, four inch intercooler. And like a set of 1700s on Gen 3, you really push it, 30 pounds on my. 1500 all day long. And I did one with a six inch core, 2600s and 6870s, and made 2000 to a 10 speed. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of power. We just did that one GT350 together too, and it made like something crazy. It had 1050cc injectors. And they oh, were, yeah. It was like 1100. I was like, yo, we got to stop. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, well, we made like 11 something, and we were like real close to 12. I was like, let's try for 12. And he's like, what injectors? I said 1050s. He was like, no. Nah, no. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Put the brake yeah. on this one quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so, 1050s are awesome because you can run them like yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, you know what I mean? That car actually, like, that car is still killing it. He runs a Texas mile with it. So oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. I do love GT350s. Yeah. They are, uh, it's like they're good cars, but man, they fucking fall apart. Yeah. They rattle so bad. Yeah, they just vibrate yeah. the dash out of it. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. Yeah. But they're cool when they came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like really all about that for a long time. When you're, do you notice a significant difference from the GT 350s to the 500? Yeah, that's a completely different car, to be honest. Mm. I do love the 500s. They are great cars. Not the best drag cars. We had a fast one. Yeah, we but did. like, <laughs> it's it's a really heavy car. You're talking about a car that's 4,200 pounds, 4,300 pounds, right? And then, you know, the DCT is a finicky little bitch, so you got to be careful. Um, you can make all the power in the world, and it makes a great street car, but it's, so, it's not meant to be a drag car. And, yeah, like, yeah. me personally, like, I believe, like, it's a better road car than it's a drag car. And Sounds I, like the weight of a Hellcat. It is. Like, yeah, yeah. like, I know the guy who drove that thing around Nuremberg until he blew it up a fucking bunch of times to get that perfect for Ford. You know what I mean? Ford really went really hard to make it a good race car, not a drag car. Yeah. Yeah. What do we what do we go? Eight eighties or something? Yeah, eighty something like that with a whip. Yeah, but we had like the mile an hour record or something. Yeah, they probably beat that by now. Yeah, by yeah. now, yeah, yeah. But at the time we, we were, were flying. We were flying. It was just a DCT. It was, it was like one sixty seven or something. That was fast. Yeah, yeah. It was a uh, Yeah, like it's a stock motor. You're like, yeah. It's a stock motor <laughs> with a whipple pulleyed all the way down. Like Fuck. and it was a it was a car that I had built here and that, that guy, I mean he still got the car. He yeah, daily, yeah, yeah. He, dra he daily drives it now. It's crazy. <laughs> They're great yeah. cars. They really are. They drive have you ever driven one? They drive, drive super nice. Yeah. yeah, it's like a really fat Lamborghini. It's my favorite. It's my favorite Mustang. It's just not sure. a drag. Car. No, it's yeah. a it's yeah. a beautiful make thousand wheel horsepower. Take your wife to dinner in a car. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, a carbon fiber track backs are gorgeous. I've got, I've got cars that I've got cars that like off the showroom floor guys like GT500. Oh, they, for sure. They won't even take delivery of the car. Yeah. They'll buy the car, have it shipped straight here, and do like our stage four, which makes like over a thousand, and like it's a daily drivable. It's like it's yeah. literally the same as stock. You just make a thousand. 
It's crazy. And yeah, so yeah. that's what you get when you partner up with a good tuner and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of it all comes in the good packages and making sure the tune's right and all that stuff like that. But it, like I said, it comes from repetition of doing yeah. it. You really dial in the package of what you really want. Having more than 10 years in tuning, you know, uh, diagnostic, forward and all that, would you consider yourself like one of the best tuners for Ford? Damn, that's I mean, fucked up. I'll say it for you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, listen, I would consider myself a competent tuner. You know what I mean? I would never say, I don't, I'm not the kind to be like, I'm the best. Yeah. Even though I probably should. No, I'm just kidding. That's fine. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of great tuners out there. Like, I, I like the, the guys, uh, you know, Lund Jr., Lund Senior. They're great, great, great dudes. I like those guys a lot. Uh, Adam Brunson, Tune Plus. He's awesome. There's, you know, the guys who aren't really popular, like Eric from Pro Charger, he does all their tunes. Yeah. But he does a great job. He makes carb tunes that live. You know, 50, 60,000 miles on a car, carb legal. And there's guys like that. There's a lot of good tuners out there. I mean, I definitely think I'm top tier because you'll see like a lot of, I don't even know how you describe them. People come and go. Dudes yeah. come in, they'll come and go. You know, you'll Fly see them pop up. I'm tuning cars. And you, Who the fuck is this guy? And the biggest thing that I can say for my own benefit is like, I had the experience of doing tens of thousands of Mustangs. So like, you're, you're your results are going to be better. Your time spent is going to be better. And it's probably going to run better right. <laughs> most of the time. And I don't want to knock anybody who's getting into it because I got into it. Yeah. And other people tried to kick me down when I first started. And, you know, I took it as motivation. I just kept plugging away. But, like, I don't want to, you know, push anyone away from right. if this is what they want to do, go for it. But I'm telling you right now, it's not a long-term thing for anyone because hydrogen cars are coming. And if you don't have to do hydrogen, you're beat. Ooh, Damn. Some hydrogens. Dude, electric's not coming. It's all hydrogen. Yeah. Guarantee the next 10 years, everything will be hydrogen. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, what's well, better than that, honestly? We haven't, we haven't even had that conversation yet. <laughs> right? yeah. uh, me and you, we haven't. Hey, Rob it. is 10 years ahead of us, oh, just yeah, letting y'all yeah. well, know. Think about it. I mean, if you look at Toyota, uh, Toyota, Toyota or uh, Honda, they have two hydrogen engines in production. You know, I mean, they're trying to bring them to market in 2026. Yeah. So you have to look at it that way, which is good for everyone here because it keeps motorsport alive because you still have, you know, engines. Yeah. They still function like a regular engine. Obviously, the combustion the, yeah, the yeah. combustion's going to be different. The injections are different and stuff like that. But it's still an engine. So, like, racing will stay the same. Drag racing will probably move over. It's just something that at least we can uh, preserve, our, uh, preserve our sport. Because yeah. if not, if we go electric, I mean, who wants to see a Tesla shootout? No. It's awesome. It's <laughs> fucking so awesome. It's the most boring thing you'll ever see, right? It's Unless like you got a plaid. <laughs> Plaids are great, man. They're awesome. My buddy had one, took me for a ride, and it's awesome. After 30 minutes, I was like, is this all this thing does? It's like, does it make noise? We just go fast real fast? Not fun. Yeah. I'd rather take a 300 horsepower Fox body, five speed, it's a piece of shit, <laughs> and grab gears because it's a more visceral feeling. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to die while I'm driving it, and that's <laughs> the best part, you know? Yeah. 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 So, so would you say... You're number one, number two, uh, top, top, top five. Tier. Listen, there's only two really in the game that I think are the biggest right now, and it's me and Lund. Mm, yeah. Same thing I said. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, and that's Lund. the exact same words. I again. mean, most of the stuff, the battle of records per se, has been between me and Lund right. over time. You know, and we just go back and forth. And I laugh about it. You know, I like I'm as a junior, we'll bullshit about stupid stuff or how much I hate this car or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's at this point, it's just become like almost like a game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. And on and and. You're both in Florida, too. It's crazy. Yeah, they're like on the it, other coast of Florida. I've actually been to their facility. They have a beautiful facility over there. It's, uh, it's awesome. They're, they're, like I said, senior and junior, they're always very nice to me. And, yeah. you know, I nice. can't, you know, I have nothing, like, nobody call them competition. I don't always see it that way. I mean, the business, this business is so big. I mean, everyone has their space in the market. Mm -hmm. And I'm, they might be the biggest tuner as far as number-wise. I'm super happy for them for that. Yeah. I don't ever want a business that big. There's so many employees and there's so much moving parts. I can't enjoy my life like that. For sure. Yeah. I see. Point. I can see that happening, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And we had, we, we've we interviewed bigger, I mean, not bigger, but. Um, Damn. Damn. No, no. <laughs> he hit you with that one. Holy shit. Damn. This All guy's right. like, oh, you ready to go? Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I have another Modelo? We, we interviewed right. companies mm -hmm. and they pretty much said the same thing. You know, when you get so big, you, you kind of don't need as much. Yeah, I'm not like. Know? I'm not saying this in any bad way. I'm not like grasping for straws for money. I don't need right, to do right, I don't right. need to do this. You know, as a job, I have other things that have made me money, and uh, I have other things that are making money. Uh, I do this because I do love it. I do love my customers. I mean, I, I have some of the best customers on the planet. They all, some of them, most of them, not most of them, some of them turn into friends, like Boyd, for example. But, like, you know, I really love going to the track uh, and seeing customers succeed. You know, when I go to Texas 2K, I mean, he'll tell you, last year, running around like a fucking madman, trying to make sure everyone's taken care of, all their shit runs good, ready, looking at data logs. Because at the end of the day, like, 
it's not about money. It's about their success. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd rather have them be successful than really make any money because I am that guy behind the wheel. You know what I mean? I'm that guy who had a Mustang, had someone else tune it. You know, I thought a three valve was fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I, back then it was. Yeah, back then. Yeah. 1270s were fucking moving, right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I'm here for the night. So, yeah. you know, we're going to go to the club after just in case. So if he, brings the cam- yeah, if he brings the camera with him, we're going to add that <laughs> into the I would not bring the camera to the bring club. Bring the camera. Listen, I got a pocket full of ones. I'm ready to ride. <laughs> Go hard podcast. Yeah, go, hard podcast. go hard podcast. Go hard in the club podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys should come to me. Go hard. I'm hard. I wonder. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. That's I am idea. hard right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I could do a podcast in a strip club. You think we can make that work? I bet you I know someone and I can yeah. make that happen. That would be the most epic podcast on the planet. I'll do it. I'm ordering like Mark. fillet tips over here <laughs> and freaking fucking espresso martinis. Like, if you spin hey. the camera around real fast, you'll see where we're at. Hey, I'm, I'm over here saying, I'll do it. My girl's like, I'm about to say your girl's right there. <laughs> she's like, we're not even getting into the parking lot. She's, First down, of all, she's down to go. <laughs> she's not. Hey, but she's here's the deal. You give her the ones and you're good. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're she's, good. Uh, she's, you know, she's production. She, yeah. yeah, production. PR. She's got to be there. Yeah, she's got to be there. We'll right. give her some blinders if she can't see the action. You're good. <laughs> oh my God. $15 a month. You can see this video. Right. Oh, we should only fans. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh my god! I always want to do something funny. My life went is... from strip club to only. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what. My life is like ridiculous. I, I was just telling you earlier. Like I just came from uh, L.A. Right. So I went to Shaq's Fun House. I tune all Shaq's trucks. I've been very blessed to like be friends with D-Mac, his cousin, and all his other cousins. I hang out with those guys. Yeah. And like going from that, <laughs> and, like all the other stupid shit I did in between to me getting here today, I could have made a movie. Yeah. You know what I mean, I would love to have like an OnlyFans or something where people can like see like how stupid my life actually is. Or you just need a like a camera guy, to be honest. Like to Her, follow she's production. <laughs> there you go. Nah, she's my camera guy. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> so that's mine. Those are that's trying to still work, right? You got to get your own, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little bit of rundown. What can someone expect from your tune? And what kind of platform? Is good no, question. on the Mustang, on the F-150s. Kind of I'll say F-150. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. take an F-150. If you have an 18 to 20 F-150, one of my favorite years, you do a tune only, right? You're going to pick up. 30, 40 wheel, the transmission is going to drive better. You can do flex fuel off the rip, honestly. But you're going to pick up all this horsepower, and it's going to be much faster. Just in like a tune only. I mean, there's so much to be gained left on the table from Ford. Like, they run them pretty hot. So the 24 Mustang, or the, 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 even the Gen 3s, they run pretty hot. Uh, but there's still plenty on the table. And a lot of it is transmission. You know what I mean? Some of it's cam timing, it's spark fuel. I mean, it's all suck, bang, blow, and make it shift, right? Yeah. But there's ways to critique it that really improve what the factory provides. Yeah. What about the Mustang? Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, I mean, like you'll get twenty, thirty wheel out of a ninety-three tune, pretty easy, and revised shifting and improves and uh, you know torque management and all the other stuff. What is your, what is the uh, like a budget build for a Mustang? I, you know, I forgot to mention that to Boyd last time, but if somebody wants to, and I get this in the comments, like, oh, why don't y'all talk about budget builds, right? Great question. And, yeah. um, what you kind know, of budget are we working with here? Yeah. How much money well, that's, that's true. How much money in your pocket? How much money you got? That's true too for them. <laughs> but let's say, you know, we always and damn, it's crazy because we always talk about two thousand horsepower cars, twenty five hundred horsepower yeah, cars. Yeah, no, no, and sure. there's no the average deal. Joe is like, hey, I just want, I want to, I want to you know. rob tune. Yeah, but I also want to go, not the average. Just cartoon, you know? No, for sure. I mean, you can get a tune from Bama, right? And I have customers that come up from Bama, and the car might run okay, but like I put my tune on, they'll be like, holy shit, it runs so much better. I go, yeah, yeah, I know, because like I'm better than Bama. <laughs> Not hard to figure out. I've seen, yeah, I've seen I've yeah. St- stock, bone stock cars with a Bama tune have come in here with holes in the pistons. Yeah. Whoa. Like, it's, it's that bad. So if you have a Bama tune, yeah, yeah. Hit, my, hit my boy. You gotta switch over. <laughs> be aware. <laughs> yeah, God damn. Yeah, yeah. uh, it's yeah. funny, it's like, I, I actually, I'm. If Bama just hit me up and like, listen, can you provide me some base files? I'd write them a custom base file just for them. They can sell to everyone. Damn. You know what I mean? Or run that check. Yeah, run that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> I got I got things to buy. You know what I'm saying? Send the bag. I'm yeah, trying I'm, to buy a, you know, a yacht this year. That'd be great. Right. <laughs> you didn't answer my question. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> the budget bill. Oh, oh, what kind of budget? Well, what, what kind budget? of budget? Yeah. Um, let's say 10 grand. If you're starting off, like, let's say you're just getting into the Mustang stuff, right? And you're on a lower budget, right? So I'd probably do a Gen 1. So a great one is a good friend of mine, Rob Foley. He's got a, a got to have it green 14 GT stick shift car. That car has gone like, you know, 1160s, which is like a 93 tune and like bolt ons, like headers and like drag pack and like a caller intake and a ball span. It's going like 1160s on pump gas. 
Like, it's a great place to start. And then from there, you could do, like, you know, I mean, it depends on how fast you want to go versus your budget, right? Obviously, yeah. money means everything. So, I mean, from there, you could pick up a used Pro Charger, or not Pro Charger, fuck, Paxton <laughs> kit, 3500 because there's a million of them out there at this point, right? So, you could pick up a used one somewhere on like, the forums or Facebook, 3500 bucks, throw that bad boy on there, and make it 650 now, right? Then you're going in the tens and close to the nines. You put a fuel system in it, you go nines, you blow it up because it's a Gen 1, <laughs> put a Gen 2 short plug in it, try again, <laughs> and you keep going faster. But it all yeah. depends, like, like I said, how much you're going to spend off a of rig. Yeah, yeah, it's um, a snowball. Most of the budget guys I get just do exhaust and a call their intake in the tune, right? That's pretty much it. But like on a Gen 3, say an 18 comes in, you put headers, JLT, 93, 85, to 85 will make 480, 490 wheel. Mm. That's a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I remember the days when we were making 300, and I was like, huh. Yeah. Now you're making a lot of, like a lot of horsepower, almost 500 wheel on a pretty much stock car. Yeah. And that's a lot of, a lot of times people stop there. Yeah. And the step up from the Paxton kit? I mean, you're going to start spending money. I mean, you're going to a Whipple, Whipple yeah. you know, Whipple or Turbos, and then you got a fuel system, and you really start spending money. So what, what would be the cost if to utilize stock blocks in stock 10 or 80? Well, not stock 10 or 80, built 10 or 80, right? Before you go to the 400, what would be the cost, I guess, um, somebody would spend to, to utilize that? To get as far as possible? Right. I mean, dude, you could spend a hundred thousand dollars. It just depends on how much money you put in. I have a friend of mine, CJ, who's got one. I mean, we've made almost two thousand wheel horsepower through it, and that thing is—he spent a lot of money to keep that thing alive and make a lot of this power. You know what I mean? We're talking motors earlier. FFRE motors, thirty grand. You can make it, but like, you know, it will it live forever? Absolutely not. But you're going to spend that kind of money if you're trying yeah. to go that fast. Yeah. No. Yeah. What about you? What you're taking I mean, so like I have uh, on the website, I have like stage one through, you know, six or whatever. I don't, I don't even know how many there are, but um, it's just kind of like to guide guys through like the start to, you know, what, what you actually want to end up with. And it's, it's a good, you know, package, you know, deal. So like uh, I say, if like your budget's 10 grand, you have a 2018 Mustang. Uh, you can, yeah, the problem is 10 grand is kind of a, 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 an odd number because if you yeah. do like basic bolt-ons and stuff like that, you're going to be below 10 grand, obviously. And then from there you got cams. Well, there's a lot of labor involved with the cams. So like our stage three, which is like the 500 plus horsepower package naturally aspirated, I believe like last time I checked was like 13 or $14,000 labor parts, everything all included. Um, and then, but if you go up to the stage, uh, four which is i think like 650 pro charger kit installed tuned you're you know 600 650 and you're the same price you're like 14 15 000. so yeah. it's like it's it's really in the mustang world it's like how far do you want to go in a because in a is going to cost way more money than boost it really does so that's that, what i that's want. not just mustangs though that's, yeah, right, that's right, a right, lot yeah, of cars yeah, yeah, well yeah. ls you can do the nice thing about going big motor right you can do a 427 I mean, 454 whatever the hell they make these days and you can go as far as you want that way because there's like return on investment whereas like the coyote you're kind of limited because you're not going to make a 400 cubic inch coyote right? Mm, right there's only so much you can do and that's why we went with him is either we do like a 5.5 or we do like this special fuel blend and, right you know and obviously well, my, it's easier. mine was stock mm. motor exactly <laughs> and you're like at this point it just seems easier to put fuel yeah, in right yeah. but that's so the 5.5 five came about because i had I purchased a five five, and I was I with the the engine builder. I was like, let's do it, send him the money, and we were coming up with everything. But by the time that he was getting to start to work on it, we had already gotten nine one O's with the stock bottom end. Yeah. So by the time that happened, and we were going with the turbos and all that, I told him, you know, hey, don't worry about it. And then the five five came out, but I, I don't want to say I started that idea, but like I, I almost it. I almost funded it. You were one <laughs> oh, of the originals, okay. so, right? Yeah, I was like one of the original ones that like ordered it and was like waiting for it. I didn't get it in time, but yeah, um, yeah I mean, that's the, the five, five liters now. That's, it kind of stinks. Cause I don't know, you might know, but uh, I haven't seen anybody on the internet. That's like there's actually not many out it. there. I think there's one I might've done. Um, I think I did one and it made like a lot of fucking power. Yeah. And if I, I would have like, yeah, had like I wheel. I was like, this doesn't make sense. If I would have <laughs> had that in my car, we would have been going. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was. It would have been crazy. No, it's crazy right now. You said LS. I'm like, damn, this guy's forbidden from saying that. 427. <laughs> 427. Yeah, you're a four. You know, it's a four yeah. guy, man. You got it six to four. 427 yeah. single over cam. Best engine ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna clip that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's facts, bro. You can buy one of the motors right now. Good fucking luck. The things are expensive. Yeah. yeah. You're 850 horsepower on pump gas. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. yeah. Wild. I love this light, by the way. I think I'm, for those of you at home wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses, my eyes are super sensitive. And this thing is bright. Yeah, it's, it's very bright. It's like the sun, right? 
Basically. Yeah. I do shine in the sun. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm uh, someone's sunshine. <laughs> Let me ask you, what, you know, I heard on the internet about like uh, they had these, this thing about ghost cams and coyotes. Oh, yeah. You what's what's the deal on that? Oh, God. I don't really do them often. I do them for select people who really like... I do them for certain people, okay? Because like, I don't want to do them for everyone because God... What's the fee on it? it let me feel like... Is, no, what's the fee? Uh, like, is it oh, more? Oh, that's free. Most of the time, like, if, I, oh. if someone hits me up and they're like, hey, listen, bro, I got this customer. It's a classic car, Coyote Swap. Can we make a cam? He'd love that shit. I'd be like, okay, no problem. I'll make this motherfucker cam. No problem. Uh, but, like, most of the time, I won't do it. Just because, like, you get... It becomes like a Honda thing to me, right? It's like the Burble tune, which is also what I'm responsible for, which I'm really sorry with the rest of the world. My bad. Uh, where it's like, you know, you decelerate and it goes bang, 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 real loud. Everyone seems to, Yeah, they love that shit. It's fucking annoying. But like people love it, so yeah. I give it to them. That's worse enough. I don't think I can condemn myself to do it. The ghost cam stuff is cool and it's awesome. You can do that with the factory ECU and all the factory hardware. But man, is it fucking annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've I've had some customers that like have requested it, yeah. and I've texted you, be like, "Oh, he wants to ghost cam," and, I go, and really? like he'll send the tune, and like it's not ghost cam or nothing, and like <laughs> I, it's like it's like an unspoken thing. Is like, like you get. he's like, "No, I'm not doing that." And if then, I'm like sitting around bored, I'm like, "All right, maybe I'll do it," yeah. but like. <laughs> but it's like it, it's just, and then the customer is like, "Oh, you know, hey, they have the ghost cam." It's like, no, that's that's not that you're going to be laughed at whenever you go to meets and stuff like that. I specifically had someone buy a tune from me. I sent him the tune. He's like, I asked for the ghost cam tune. I go, where on my website does it say I do ghost cam tunes? He's like, what's what I wanted? I go, we well, have bought the wrong tune. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, the E85 tune runs awesome though. I go, congratulations. Have a great day. Right. Enjoy it. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, yours well, now, baby. <laughs> yeah. Whenever whenever I was younger, I used to have, uh, like with my vet, I would always have to, you know, the tuner it was doing at the time, I was like, oh, can you make it do like flames whenever I let off or something? The blue, that, the that blue was, vet? Yeah, that was like that was like the thing. Though that's when I started learning. It's like the tuners and stuff. It's it's not. It's I don't want to. I say think the, it's the mindset. Honestly. I don't want to say oh, the. I don't. I don't want to say the word. The mindset, but it's yeah. it's a yeah. It's it's it, a ricer type thing, right? It's a ricer. But thing. like uh, being from like you know seeing that like ghost cam when I, before I was even like doing anything right. Um, it's cool. Like on the outside looking in, if you're getting into it, or you're on the outside. You're like, oh, this is fucking cool, and it is cool. But like if to, being, being inside the industry and doing it, you're like, yeah, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to fault anyone or like take it away from anyone. So can you, is there like a significant hearing difference from like oh, actual, it sounds like a cam from cams yeah, and yeah. actual? It sounds like it's got. Uh, actual cams don't really sound that cammy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can, you can do the same thing, right? But like the park position for, uh, you know, an after a cam depends on the tuner, right? They could park them in stock locations. They could park them at zero, whatever. I always park them at zero because I know like pissing the valve is probably your best bet at zero without having an issue if anything ever happened. Um, so you can make them cam if you really want to, but nine percent of the time you're not going to get a cam noise unless you like lock them for real. Yeah. Unless I have, or I do it for you, which slim pickings there. <laughs> yeah. That's like the VC. The one he says that he means like VCT lockout. So yeah, you, yeah, like, you get yeah. rid of the variable. No variable control. cam timing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So when you do that, like Martha, whenever you start it up, it sounds like it's got a massive cam. It sounds like an LS, right? Yeah, yeah. It sounds just like it, but it's not in the tune. It's just it's locked out. I mean, the, having yeah. VCT is probably one of the best gifts from God on the planet because you can have a gigantic, like a GT500, right? You can have a gigantic camshaft, which they have, and you can drive that thing around and idle smooth as. Smooth as butter, right? Just drive super smooth. But you can rev this thing to 8,500. Damn. You know what I mean? And all with, it doesn't sound like a race car at all. It sounds like a nice cruising car. There's no big lumpy idle. It drives like shit. None of that. It's smooth as butter. Yeah. And that's the benefits of VCT, you know? Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. I, I have to keep it there if I can. No. Yeah. But it's not, just, I mean, I, I don't yeah. know if you've Can't ran, do it I mean, I'm sure you ran into it before, but like, I, the reason why I've deleted it in the past is because you, you start making so much power, you're at the track. And the VCT yeah, just goes flat. The, 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 yeah, VCT, the VCT yeah. flat. There's lines. a problem when you start making big power and you're under back pressure. Like the exhaust cam, you'll push that cam backwards, and it'll yeah. just it'll go into fault mode. You know what I mean? And zero the cam. So and put yeah, it, it comes to a point where you have to lock them yeah. out, and that's the point where you know I reached and I just started locking them. Especially all the out. exhaust cam. You can do just the intake cams unlocked and leave the exhaust cam locked, and you can get away with that. Yeah. yeah. But it's all anything turbocharged or anything like that. You're always going to run into back pressure issues, right? So like having the VCT there is almost like a cushion. So it really pushes back and back pressure and throws everything out of whack and they go to neutral. Got you. So tuning, so you're mostly on HP tuners, right? HP tuners, SCT, PCM tech. Do you ever get into like the field tech, you know? I do. Way? I've done field tech. Uh, I did a field tech car. I mean, a good friend of mine, Eric Holliday, shout him out. Big Papa, father time over there. <laughs> 
He tunes pro mods and everything on fuel tech. So if I really have like a problem, I go, like, Eric, can you just do this? Because I don't have time for this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's just, and I'm going to do a couple of fuel tech cars this year that are going to be fast or just because I'm bored. Uh, so you will have that in there as well. Yeah. Holly stuff. I'm, <laughs> I used to do a lot of Holly stuff back in the day when I was first doing it, right? With like the, the big block Chevys and shit we were doing. That's fine. When you started getting into like the new Coyote stuff with like Holly, I'm like, dude, Fuck this mess. Like, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I feel my heart like in a stake through my heart. I mean, right it now. works good. I know. It, it, for me, I haven't spent the time to sit there and fuck with it to the point where I'm like extremely competent and have yeah. no problem figuring out problems. Yeah. But I don't have that kind I of think last 62K, I was telling you about you know mine, and you were like, he was giving me pointers on it. I mean, obviously, I have Dylan yeah. tuning my stuff on Holly, but he was like, oh no, like y'all are on 17 degrees of time. Yeah, like, put like, more timing in that yeah, bad boy. Yeah, he was like, it all works, like I said, the same way, right? Suck, bang, blow. It all works the same way. Coyotes specifically, like you can tune them on whatever and know what coyotes like for yeah. timing wise. I mean, especially fuel. if this guy can tune the stock ECU stuff, he could definitely tune a standalone ECU yeah. because they're even simpler. Yeah, they're yeah. so simple. It's just learning how to navigate the software. Right? Yeah, I mean, uh, back in like the old days, so I used to do a lot of like Holly stuff and that was fine and all but like doing this stuff now I'm it's so easy I'm so proficient at it uh, to you know get stuff done I'm like, I don't yeah. want to like waste too much time on something right now especially because like, I'm so busy I just don't want to like let me take a new project on it and forget about everyone else on the planet for a month speak of the customers you know not, I'm not saying bash customers right no I'm, no, no, I'm no. saying um, like the ones maybe a time where you got like the most headache from a customer of a tuning, because trust me, when I was tuning like my turbo truck, mm -hmm. you know, there are times the tuners, they fucking get overwhelmed. For sure. You know, they get like a headache or, you know, the customer is maybe dogging them about a tune, you know, or- I got a great just, example. This happened a couple weeks ago. There's a Coyote swap car. It's a Gen 1 control pack. I've tuned thousands, thousands. <laughs> And it's like a fucking stock injector, stock math housing. Like, it's like, okay, I could literally send you the Coyote Swap tune and you like, would not know the difference. You could leave me alone, right? I'm sending this guy a file, right? It's a tune Coyote Swap file, a crate file. Send it to him. It's like 50% lean. I'm like, dude, something's wrong. No, nothing's wrong. Okay, and we're fighting it back and forth and I'm making changes and nothing's happening. Meanwhile, while he's doing that, I'm making 1,500 wheel over here on a car with two files. I'm not really having a problem. And I'm like, why is this so difficult? <laughs> you know what I mean? That shit drives me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. What but, about the, the GT500? Do you remember that that I had? Mm. That was a big headache child, and we changed the cams back to stock, and oh, yeah. everything was fine. Yeah, that will happen on those big jobs. Yeah, it's just that yeah. I, I had one that was like a big major headache. And, I think I remember that, yeah. He, like, it was actually tuned with Lund at the time, and then I reached out to him, and, like, that's another great thing about getting tuned by him is if you have a problem, he also diagnoses it too, like, helps you, tries to help you diagnose yeah. it. So, I mean, I don't know, I might get special treatment, but, you know, we're sitting here diagnosing this car, and then he's like, you know what? Try to change the cams out and see what it does. Did that, car's fixed, perfect. Like, deliver it, I still haven't seen it. It's been, like, two, three years. At the end of the day, like I said, I started as a mechanic. So, like, I enjoy, like, those little problem trials yeah. of trying to find the answer. Diagnostic. Most of the time. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> I got places to be. But right. in, a lot of the times, I will try and help everyone I can. Yeah. I mean, there's people who hit me up now who send me logs. And I'm like, who's this tune by? And they're like, oh, someone else. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the problem? I'm like, oh, this is doing this. And I'm like, here's your problem. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> can, yeah. on, the, on, the, um, on the Coyotes, can you lock the PCM as well? Yeah, yeah you, I mean, it's not. Really, I know on the Chevys you can. That's yeah, the Chevys you can, the Ford you can. They scramble it so you can't read it with HP stuff like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. And I do. We do that specifically. I'm gonna tell you why a lot of tier, top tier tuners will do that is because there's a lot of guys top out tier. there. You'll get like you know the same thing in the LS bar, right? You're getting a file, and then someone else is gonna rip it out and then finger fuck it and then put it back in, and then they're gonna fuck it up or something like that, or they don't even know what they're doing and they yeah. fuck it all up, and just that customer's gonna end up having a headache in the end, and then like and, or. He takes it and he starts ripping your shit off and he's got success with it. Now he's taking your shit. But 90% of the time is to keep the riffraff out because like a lot of people will try and have someone's buddy down the street's got HP insurance cable, wants to finger fuck this thing. <laughs> I'll make them shifts <laughs> higher. No problem, brother. Yeah. So yeah, they can't do it. What about like the copy and paste? I copy and paste shit ever, all day. <laughs> Speak on that. I, mean, I, like, feel like, I feel like people- I don't want to say this they, the wrong they way. Give, they give, the, hold on. I, I've, people yeah, go copy paste sooner so I'll give you this right here. I'm going to tell you exactly why. <laughs> Uh, because like it is a lot of copy paste. Yes, I have a file in your specific operating system that I've used a thousand times. I know what kind of power it makes. I know what it shifts at. I know it's optimal. I know the cam timing is optimal. You're not special. I've done it ten thousand times before you. I know what's best. We've done it a million times. 
And like, remember, I was doing two cars a day, five days a week for five years. Yeah. I've done every comedy you could imagine. I've tested it all. We have all the data. Trust me. That's why you pay me. <laughs> I will copy and paste the file. If someone orders a 93 stock airbox file, I have the file for that. I'm going to send it to you. You're going to get the best tune I can possibly give you. It's going to be quicker that way than me going, where would you look your shift points at? Here's your tune. It's going to run fast. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's easier that way. And like it's either you're either buying into my tune because you trust me and my experience and the things I've done, or you're just wasting my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Or your time. I will sit there and I will tweak things for certain people 100% if they want like something else change or something like that. But like my goal was to get the most optimal tune out of the box because at the end of the day, it's quicker for you and it's quicker for me. Yeah. To kind of touch on that, it's kind of like with with my car or whatever, the NA car, whenever we were doing it, a lot of the time too, I just left it up to him. I was just taking a log every time and be like, do whatever you think needs to be done. And then he would, you know, do the revision and stuff like that. So it's like, you got to put all your trust into your tuner. And if yeah, you don't have sure. that, you're not going to be happy. And that's not, his combination is something specific, right? right? We're trying to go super fast. If it's a JLT only 93 car, yeah. Please. Yeah. It's just <laughs> please. And uh, you'll get into the NA battles where like you'll have this tuner and this tuner and the same mods and this and this car is so much faster. Ninety percent of the time it's bullshit. And because uh, like there is variances in NA cars, right? Does the you know the, all the cylinders have the same compression? Does everything run good? Is this cold intake Every better than this cold intake? There's so many different problems, weights, gear ratios, stupid little things that can make one car faster than another. Yeah. Hey, Every combination might not be the same. Yeah. But like. You should like run the exact same in a perfect world, but nothing's perfect. Yeah, for sure. This might sound cliche, but Ooh. why, why, why tune Ford? Cliche. Because I'm a Ford guy. I'm a Ford guy. Yeah. Like, the day, like the Coyote is the best V8 engine ever made, hands down. I, I'm gonna get some heat from the, the Hellcat guys or the LS guys. They can go fuck off. <laughs> the LS is a great engine. It is really good. The LT, that they're all great engines. But like, there's not anything that you can buy today out of the box that can sing to 8500 on a stock engine. V8 wise, domestic. He's right. He's right. You know what I mean? Like, we're taking GT500s and making 1200 wheel and spinning to 8500 RPM. 80. I know you guys in the GM world don't have tax that go up that high. We do. <laughs> Damn, I never seen that one. Hellcats are shifting to 6500. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And that's great. The Hellcats also, but it's a Hemi. It's a great engine. You can take a TRX and make 1200 horsepower. That's fucking awesome. But like, me as the person that I am, I like the Coyote V8 because of the higher RPM. I'm a higher RPM lover. You know what I mean? We can take boat motors all day and turn them to 6,000 RPM. That's great. But, like, the Coyote is something special. Yeah. For sure. What, what else makes it superior? I mean, twin independent variable cam timing. High RPM capability out of the box. You can run Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 3 direct injection, 12 and a half to 1 out of the box with port injection. So you don't have that stupid uh, sludge build up in this, the cylinder head and stuff like that. I mean, Ford engineers are A-level engineers, right? I always like to say, like... The Ford engineers, the guys who got A's. <laughs> GM engineers, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I, know, I, am a friend, I know a GM engineer, and I'm not going to say anything bad about him. He's an extremely smart gentleman. Most of their engineers are like B level, C level, and then you got the, uh, you know, <laughs> the Dodge guys coming right in the D's. <laughs> but like, I'll give it to bucket. Ford because Ford will take an ex extremely powerful processor and they'll build in all these functions that can do all this shit, right? Whereas if you go and look at like a GM, the C8 is the first one that has wide bands. Why is that? Wide bands do tons of things, right? You have closed up fuel control constantly, you have a tighter margin of error for fuel control, so you're going to get increases in fuel economy, you're going to have easier uh, O2, or O2 readings, something like that, for all your fucking emission testing that you're going to have to do for the factory, yeah. 100%. But it's cheaper for them to make a, probably a shittier control that has, uh, you know, narrow bands instead of wide bands. Ford was like, they made such an incredible processor on the copperhead, twin independent variable cam timing, electronic throttle body, wide bands, all this shit. I've seen such shitty tuners make such shitty math curves that look like the Rocky Mountains, and it still went fast because the, the computer was there to correct for it. Damn. Yeah. Uh, you know who I'm talking to, too. Trust What's me. This? I know you're out there watching this. <laughs> yeah. What's his name? I can't say it out loud. <laughs> I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. The Rocky Mountain, the, the, the Blue know. Mountains. I opened that shit like up, and course? I was like, dude, this right here would kill someone if they fell off this ledge. No. Terrible shit. I, I did a math grid for him, actually. It, I sent it to you. In his car, so it would start picking up almost boost on the big end with the OTR, and like the math grid had a fucking shelf in it, because yeah. it was so fucked up. And I was like, and the fuel would go just array. It would go fucking crazy, because all the air was taken in on the back half. And so I had to like fucking rake that bad boy. That's, that's, that's a sales pitch for my It was OTR. really bad. <laughs> that's <laughs> the most airflow that you could buy off the it shelf. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Literally, we're seeing like almost boost level. And I was like, well, this is probably not good. Yeah. yeah. That's the only time I really do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I did hear 
and I came prepared, guys. Cause oh, I, shit. I gotta did, ask him. I gotta ask him. He did his homework. I gotta, I gotta have Damn, to ask a, him. He gets a B plus right now. <laughs> I'm, 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 oh, we're know. gonna get the A by the end of the night. Don't He's worry. He's pretty much calling me a Chevy engineer, but right oh, now. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Those are shaving engineers make money. Dodge. <laughs> like, yeah, well, it could be worse, man. Yeah, it could be worse. Some Hellcats are fast, though. I don't want to take away. No, they're not. No. <laughs> oh, now he said they're fast. No, Hellcats, are, <laughs> Hellcats can be fast. Before he forgets his question, let they're him just it not, yeah, they're enough. just not Mustang fast. Yeah. They're in the different fast, the slower fast. Um, I heard that the, the Coyotes stole the concept from the GTRs. Oh. Uh, that was on uh, the Workhorse podcast, wasn't it? Antonio. That's <laughs> fucked up, man. How could you? <laughs> the I'm pretty sure the GTR only has uh, intake cam variable cam cam timing. I don't. I think the exhaust is locked. I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, let's be honest. That GTR engine is just another V6 that they've been making for years, right? That that engine comes from the G35s, G37s. Like it's a rendition of that engine. Sure, it's not the same exact engine. Right. But you know, they've had 20 years to tweak that engine into perfection. That even if you buy like a G a, what is it, G37 right now, they make like 350 horsepower. I mean, it's a, or 400 at this point probably. Out of a V6, it's very impressive. It's a very tweaked engine. It's very uh, uh, it's impressive for what it is, right. you know. So, did they copy it? Probably not. I don't think they did. No, because nah, like Ford had been working on the overhead cam stuff for a long time, right? The two valve was an absolute clusterfuck. It's disgusting. And the four valve, you know, they finally got their hands right. The the early four valves were drunk. Let's be honest, the early Cobras. But like two thousand one, two thousand four, three, the Mach one, they finally got in the right direction. And I think the Ford GT coming out was the right direction. They went to a three valve. They figured out that they really fucked up. And they're like, you know what? Another camshaft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two more camshafts two actually. More, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that like. I don't know if they stole from the GTR or not. I want to say that because like the, the designs are definitely different. They mm -hmm. make similar power. I've seen the podcast. They definitely make similar power, but like that's on a main line. I can make that dyno read whatever you want. Like you can do the same length of pull, and if you're making like it depends on the turbo spools, but the, obviously it's gonna yeah. look somewhat similar. Right. And they both make higher RPM horsepower. Yeah. Like I would spin my GTR like seventy five hundred. That was stock. Right. He actually owned a GTR. Yeah, <laughs> I had a GTR. I love that car. Damn. Yeah, that's what um I've I've heard on other GTR podcasts. Well, like we did with Mac mm -hmm. and uh, Dan, he said that his, his fucking GTR revs are like nine grand. Or yeah, I mean, Mac's that, like 10. At that 10, point, 10, you, 10 you have something. to, right? Yeah. The only thing that makes more RP, or horsepower is RPM. Yeah. So it's just a giant air pump. So the faster and more efficiently you can pump air in and out, the more power it makes. So like big camshafts in GTR, you move that shit up in you know, 9,000 RPMs all day long. Like his car, we were shifting at 8,700. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Stock Martha, motor. Martha, the rev limiter is at 9,800. Yeah. <laughs> We're not shifting it that high. Uh, that's Brett LaSalle, if you ever get him on the podcast, I think he's shifting at like 10, 5, 11,000. Like, Damn. That's, that's what you have to do to think about it. And here's even something crazier. If you're running a, let's say you're running a ProLine Hemi right now, Pro Charger setup, ProMod, 10,000, 10,500 out of a 520 cubic inch billet Hemi with a Pro Charger, 5,000. Yeah. Well, they don't make 5,000. Well, let's say 3,000 yeah. horsepower crank, or the tires. Think about that. 520 cubic inch engine, 10,000 RPM. Big ass, yeah. That's like unheard of. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. They're you also going 240, 250 in the fucking You gotta spend eight. some money to get that. <laughs> yeah, they're 65, 70,000 a pop. Well, they used to be. They're probably more expensive now. But you gotta check the rods every 25, 30 passes. You know, might need rods at 25. Yeah. You're looking at a whole different ball. It's 150,000. at least. Yeah. yeah. It's 150 grand to run a ProMod team for a year, minimum. For the ProLine, yeah. What is your highest horsepower car you tune? Highest horsepower car I've tuned? I've had a couple cars make 2,000. Seems to be the number. I'd love to do another car. I mean, I feel like we're going to be exceeding the limits of what we have at 2,000. Although, I mean, you could make 2,500. If a customer really wanted to go, I want to take a, uh, a Gen 2 ECU and turn it up as high as possible, I could easily make the power. Whether that would be applicable in an environment where, like, it could be fast in the track without a standalone, I'm not quite sure. Right. I'll take that one. You want this one? Here's I'll a gift from me to you. <laughs> Right, yeah. but yeah, two thousand is about right. Through a ten speed too, which is crazy. <sighs> you gotta talk. You gotta talk about the ten speeds, man. Honestly. I mean, listen, I'm gonna tell you right up. When it works, they're great. When they don't work, they're fucking junk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, guys. That's all he has to say. I'm right. telling you, it. when it works, it is phenomenal. Yeah. He'll tell you when that thing beams down there, it's click, 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 click through the gears. It's beautiful. Yeah. And you get all the, the the benefits of gear multiplication and all that good shit. Phenomenal. And when it doesn't work. 
I hate you more than you hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Trust uh, me. I mean, I, I mean, I guess a good question to ask is like, do you feel like that's what made the Gen threes way faster? I absolutely. Mean, I, that's what I absolutely. Say. Yeah, I yeah. think like that right there. That because I mean, it, let's look at like certain things. Right, there's certain different things that need different transmissions. So like, a six or eighty turbo car will be fast. Yes, a six or eighty ten speed car will be fast. Yes, it even more benefits it when it has a blower on it. Or when it has that natural aspirator, because gearing makes things faster for both blowers and you know NA turbos. It's hit or miss. Turbos don't give a shit. As soon as a turbo comes on, if it's a properly spec turbo system, once that turbo lights off, it don't give a shit what RPM you're at. It's making power. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just going. You can shift that thing at five thousand. It don't give a shit. It's going. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's got a point. <laughs> I do love turbos, but I do love Whipples and Pro Chargers. I'm a big fan. Didn't didn't you? Oh, sorry, you go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, didn't Ooh. you? Didn't you tune the the fastest pro charge Mustang? Uh, well, it depends if you want to say stock ECU. But yeah, I think Nick Fosnall is probably one of the fastest ones out there. It's like thirty six hundred pounds with F one ninety four. The Burgundy car. Yeah, right? and they yeah, sixteen hundred yeah. wheel. It's been like seven seventies, I think, or seven sixties, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. So what you have all these manufacturers, right? You have Whipple, mm -hmm. VMP. What do you recommend? Is there a certain manufacturer you recommend? Well, someone? I would not consider VMP a manufacturer. They just buy blowers. But I don't want to say anything bad about them. I like Justin and all. But they, uh, they just teamed up with Whipple right, to I make a that. VMP version of their Whipple, which no one in this world ever thought was going to happen. No. Yeah. There was so much bad blood between them and Whipple for years. You thought World War III was going to happen. And now <laughs> they teamed up, and here we are. Uh, there is certain manufacturers I will recommend. I do tune pretty much anything. Yeah, uh, I like Whipples a lot. I mean, Dustin is a... I, he's like an uncle to me. I love Dustin. He's a great dude. He makes a, a, a superior product to anyone else. He's got all the CAD designs. He has all the engineering. He's got Ford in his back pocket for stuff. Really? He's going. He can do more than anyone else when it comes to that. Damn. Pro Charger, big shit out there. Eric of Pro Charger. They make a really good system. You know, if you're a, a Pro Charger kind of fan, big. I love them guys. They make great power. Pax and Vortec. I mean, I, I used to know uh, Lance over at Vortec. Great, super nice dude. They make a great product as well. They do a carb legal system. And then ESS is probably bottom of the barrel. It is the cheapest. It does make power. It does. It runs really well. It is the cheapest as far as a century goes. And then turbos, I mean, you go to a custom kit on three or Hellion. You know what I mean? It's really where we're at. Uh, people are going to talk Hellion. Not Hellion, I'm sorry. We just talked about this earlier, and I'm going to bring it up right now. There's an individual that we both know. Yeah. Was out here shit talking on three performance. You know what on three performance yes, is? Okay. Yes. They the turbo. make turbo kits. Are they made in America? No. Absolutely not. No. Do they work well? Yeah, do they have fitment issues? Sometimes. I know Chad, the owner, he's a personal friend of mine. Um, he has worked, I know him personally. Like I've seen him stress more than anyone else you could imagine. He has worked so hard to make those kits the best bang for the buck you could possibly get with the best quality he can offer you. They definitely the came point. up. They definitely for came sure. up. Yeah. Back in the days, were they not as good? For sure. I just did a kit with him the other day. They just made a new low mount kit, and it, the quality has surpassed all their other stuff 100%. He puts everything into that. He cares about his customers. If you're shit talking to him a lot, he cares. He wants to make things better, and he's awesome for that. I cannot follow him. He's a fantastic business owner. This guy over here, yeah. who, we're not going to name him this at this second. He's shit talking on three. Fucking junk, Chinese turbicates, blah, blah, blah. This guy is a fucking loser, all right? <laughs> yeah. Shit talking a gentleman yeah. who has a fucking twin turbo performante wearing a Richard Mill on his wrist, <laughs> driving around, and this motherfucker <laughs> lives in a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is that where is, the juice comes out. I this told is you. absolutely fucking ridiculous. That's yeah. fucking stupid. I'm like, this guy is successful, businessman. He actually cares. He really does care. He's not like an asshole just trying to make money on people. Yeah. And this guy's like, your shit sucks. Thanks, bro. Thanks yeah. for that. Like, like, this is a small community of manufacturers, right? And tuners all alike, right? Right. For me, like, I've always looked at it to be like, you know, if someone's doing bad in a certain area, hey, you've got a problem with this. I will tell them. Like Pro Charger, for example, they fucked up big time putting the math in the intercool. It absolutely sucks because you can't get consistency out of it as far as the tuner goes. They finally started putting the math in the charge tube, and boy, you can do those tunes like this, right? Super easy, more consistency. They have to make less tunes. I have to make less tunes. It makes everyone happier. But like being in this industry and shit talking someone else and trying like, instead of trying to help them with the benefit of being better, because this is something you do every day. You fucking deal with these people every day. Yeah, right. you know what I mean. Yeah. You, this is what you do. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, and one thing like I could touch on is like my deal with Texas Speed and stuff like that. It's like you, the, p companies are going to trust you with their products, and if you aren't going to have the reputation of talking bad about about other companies, whatever. So For it's sure. like if something were to ever happen, you know, with the company or whatever that you know I worked with, 
that I'm not going to talk about it. We're going to work together and make that product better. Got you. So there, yeah, I haven't, sure. I haven't had anything happen with any of the companies I've ever worked with, but right. in that scenario, they know I'm not going to do that for sure. This other guy that we know, it, it makes a living off talking down on other people. So yeah, I mean, uh, I just, there's been companies that I've had bad issues with and yeah, I've been like, listen, no, this no. shit is junk. And yeah. I haven't said it publicly, but I, customer goes, I want to buy this. I go, fucking no, don't, 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 yeah. don't, don't. Listen, look at me, look at me. Don't buy it. Wait, you know they, I mean? they can't see your eyes. Oh fuck! Uh, yes. They don't know where about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I will re- look out for them that way. But like I won't ever be like yeah, don't ever. I won't post the internet. Don't buy from this company. They're a bunch yeah. of schmucks. Their shit sucks. Yeah, you're not gonna do that. We all run businesses. Right? We're all business owners. You know, people do make mistakes. Shit happens, right? Especially when you're making products. Fabbing, especially fabrication. Especially oh, yeah. fabrication. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking transmission parts at this point. <laughs> 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 but uh, like. You know, I'll give them time to work it out. You know what yeah. I mean? It was, shit happens. Their first run of fucking valve bodies might not go great. But, mm-hmm. like, you know, will you fix it? It depends on you, baby. Yeah, you might yeah. find out. You probably won't, though. I don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, you got to work with the companies that work with you and make the yeah. company. I mean, if you make the product better, it's like the Texas Speed, though, that I got going. It's yeah, like, for sure. If something happens, we're going to make it better, and that only makes it better for the people it, who are exactly. buying the motors. It benefits the entire community. It benefits nobody exactly. if I go on the internet and talk about them on my podcast. Or not podcast, <laughs> but internet show. <laughs> but internet show. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, My bad. Yeah. I don't, it's not a podcast. I wouldn't bro. call it. Yeah. You know what's a podcast? Yeah. It, it was. It's not a podcast. This. Yo, we're going hard right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is where it gets good. It's getting better. Yeah. Uh, a couple more of these. We're going to be fist fighting by the end of night. Trust me. <laughs> it's going to go crazy. I get extra rowdy. My pants will come off. We'll get nuts. Hey, fist fighting the air? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> we'll be punching the air like Danny Glover over here. Yeah. Oh, my God. But yeah, I mean. What about manufacturers for engines? You know, they got Ooh, uh, let's yeah, not get started yeah, on that. Yeah, I mean, oh, we can go down this fucking rabbit hole. There is some fuck ups out there for sure. Like, there's, um, you know, the big ones, FFRE. Listen, FFRE uh, goes. Texas up. Speed has their Coyote ones yeah, now, right? That's true. Right. So, I, I'm, I, they got with me and I'm trying their motors, and they legitimately came to me yeah. at PRI and were like, let's try it. We want to put the motor in the hands of somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah, at least we go fast with it, right? Yeah, so they want to go fast. They gave me a motor. We're trying it out. Made way more than they expected it was going to make. And I was trying to push them to make even more horsepower, but they're like, ah, let's take it easy. Let's just try to get some numbers out of it first. Yeah, yeah check um, reliability. How long will it live at 1,200 wheels? Stuff like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, I made 1,500 on a, on a mainline dyno. I thought it was 16. It was 15. Jesus. It was okay, 15. Okay. That's a but lot of I was trying to go to 30. It's just, you know, they were like, well, let's try to run at the track first. Like, let's not. Nah, let's pull it up right here, right <laughs> now. Right. <laughs> so, I came to party. We're going right. hard. So it's like, yeah, like that, like that, that type of relationship, like if anything were to happen, like I'm going to work with them and try to, you know, make their product better. So they're doing uh, a motor that's the, it's the cheapest short block that you can buy on the Coyote platform Damn. for the parts that it has. Um, and it's a really good motor. I proved that. I made 1500 um, to the wheels when they were advertising 1500 to the crank. Um, FFRE is another great one. I mean, they've they've got great for sure. Products. For sure, they built um, some of the best engines. I mean, FFRE, TKM, those guys do great jobs. Uh, I mean, they're even like you know, TKM does a lot of uh, Dodge engines. Too. They do a lot of right. stuff. I yeah, mean, Kevin over there runs a good shop. I mean, those guys go through so much. They have so many different combinations of shit they do. LS, GM, big block Chevy. I mean, yeah. they do. A, they do a great job. I mean, I've made two thousand horsepower with one of their Coyotes, and that motherfucker runs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then FFRE, another great. I mean, I tried to murder one the other day on the dyno. We tried 40, 45 pounds of boost. And all it did was break the diff. Damn. <laughs> yeah. They broke yeah. the diff, yeah. Snapped the diff like a fucking Twix. Like, like, like that Shot diff. the pin out of the fucking diff. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Wild. But yeah, they make great engines. I mean, there's some people out there that I, I don't recommend, but... I what about like, let's say a oh, customer, here we go. Here we one go. of your customers is watching, right? Oh, is he? Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. What's up, baby? He's like, what manufacturers maybe just need more improvement? All of them. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, there's. I mean, MMR used to run the run the shit back in the day. They still make a lot of money. They do make some cool, some cool parts and stuff like that. A lot of fucking nightmare stories, though. You yeah. know, they definitely need improvement. Um, but you know, it's all it comes to quality control and shit. Like the end of the day, there is other people that I know personally that I don't want to say any problems with because I love them. I do. They do a great job, and they know what their faults are, and they're working on fixing them. You know what I mean? Um, and I hope you know they become another top tier people like they are. And that will happen. But, like, right now, I feel like, personally, I feel like what I'm seeing, as far as the market goes, is FFRE and TKM are, like, doing the best engines you could buy, for sure. I mean, RPG is another good one. Will over at RPG does good engines, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I've, ran his, I've ran his motor over the years. Exactly. Too, I mean, I've tuned tons of his engines, and Will's a great dude. 
Uh, but if you look at the fastest car you're in the planet right now, uh, I would say it's either TKM because they have that one car, and then you the have, one, yeah. yeah, then you have uh, Brett with the FFRE engine that just runs. I mean, dude, six twenty six or whatever is. I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah, right. ever. That's that. That was like I told you on the last one. Is like is he sponsored by FFRE? Uh, I'm sure they help him. I mean, maybe yeah. they help him. That's up to how Joe feels about it. That'd now, be fun, but, right? I mean, but look about it. They're running 11,000 RPM on a stock crank. I mean, if it bends, I'm sure Joe's like, I got another crank for you to borrow. You know, yeah, what I mean? I'm yeah, sure yeah. he don't care. Yeah. They, he ended up winning sick week, too. Yeah, it was like, just crazy. Like right? I was telling you, he yeah. drove 1,500 miles in, yeah, in a low six. In a 302 cubic inch street car. We'll call it a street car, even yeah, though it's car. got a great chassis under it. But that, that 302 cubic inch Ford mod motor was faster than a pro mod. Yeah, Damn. Jeff Jeff Lutz was second place, <laughs> and a pro mod, and a in pro a, mod, in a bro mod, and all a right, mod. not even a pro mod, <laughs> yeah. yeah, crazy, yeah. It's I mean the Coyote. I said it years ago, and I'll say it again. I mean the true potential of the Coyote hasn't been seen. Where they're getting close to it. I mean Brett's definitely on that cutting edge, and he will run the gambit until the end of time because he's going down that rabbit hole where <laughs> yeah. he's going. He'll go faster than anybody because he'll just keep going. You know, I mean Brett is that kind of guy, um, and he'll he'll literally find every. Every hidden horsepower and every ET they could possibly find. Him and Jay over there at Real Street. You know, Jay does great. Jay's one of like the best Modic tuners on the planet, in my opinion. Jay is such a great guy. Uh, those two together will we'll get it done for sure. And uh, I think Joe, I, I do think uh, Brett will hit fives probably this year, I think, Ooh, in, in the right air. I mean, dude, shit. think about it. It's got the power for yeah. sure. It's there. They just got to get it on the track. You think he's holding back? One more time? You think he's holding back? Oh, no. No. Not yet. But like, it, it always was the same, right? So look, look at 275 10 years ago, right? They were going five O's in the eighth, and that was fast. Now they're going like three or four fourteens, four O's. I mean, over time, you figure out little tweaks and this and that and this and that, and, you know, technology improves and better parts come out and better turbos come out. And then, like, you just keep going and going and going until, hey, we hit fives. What's next? Five fifties. Let's keep going. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, think about it. Look at Promons, right? Uh, what's that? The blue car went uh, 530s, I think, in the quarter. Or 540s, was it? Yeah. Um, I mean, how much fucking faster do you have to go? Are you going to hit a four? Like, uh, we're going to see Promons go fours? Fucking rocket. <laughs> think about it. They're going 280 miles an hour out the fucking back door. Yeah. At what point do you not even need top fuel anymore? Right. Damn, that's top fuel speeds. Literally, they're going. I mean, top fuel. I mean, they're in three hundreds, but well, top, yeah, top fuel. I mean, so like a funny thing about top fuel is they start ramping timing in like five seconds, or sorry, two and a half seconds in the pool. I, I believe. Don't quote me. They start pulling timing out of it to slow it the fuck down. They're literally trying to slow them down. They only run the thousand. So Damn. if you ran a full quarter mile with like no timing restriction, that thing would go 350, 360. Well, would it go three eighty one? Yeah, I think it was three eighty three or something. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, low three forty one. Three forty. One hundred forty one miles an hour. Bob Tasca. What motors are are they on? Uh, they're all so it's a combination of a big block Chevy and a Hemi. Okay. Well, I think it's basically just Hemi. Yeah, right? basically a Hemi. Yeah, I think the I think of a wedge yeah. or a PLR Hemi. Uh, I think they're just basic fucking Hemis, but like that is a different fucking ball game. Think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. That technology is fifty years old, sixty years old. Those teams are operating off the cubic dollar. Yeah, <laughs> basically, it's, you know, it's fucking crazy. So this is a fun thing as a tuner. I'm gonna explain this. They don't actually tune the engine. They get a tune done right, and they have a spreadsheet. That they use based on atmospheric conditions, they'll change the compression of the engine to keep the same tune up in it. Damn. Think about that. It's fucking wild. No. All they do is just monitor fueling, make sure everything's good and timing, all that shit. They obviously they get their basic data, but they're they're not making any tune-up changes to the engine at all. They're obviously changing how fast the clutch couples, but like as far as the engine goes, is the same exact tune-up every time. They will change head gaskets to get the, the desired compression thickness, to get the right compression ratio they're looking for, to make sure that everything is exactly the same as it was in that chamber the run before, atmospheric -wise. And they do it in, what is it, 30 yeah, minutes? 45 minutes 45 to rebuild minutes. the engines, yeah. I've seen the rebuild uh, yeah. Yeah. on them. They just that fucking, shit's fucking cool, man. It's yeah. like 45 minutes. It's yeah, it's nuts. I mean, I would Whole love... Whole fucking engine rebuild. God yeah. damn. Yeah, I would love to, like... Uh, I mean, I guess in my younger days, I'd be like, I'd love to do this. Now I'm like, oh, fuck that. That's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not into Russian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We forgot to talk about one of the most important iconic Mustangs to come out this year. Or yeah, we talked about it a little bit. We talked about yeah, twenty four. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are your thoughts on the S six fifty? The new one. So yeah. we talked about it a little bit, right? The dual red, or I'm sorry, the dual throttle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That fucking janky shit. Um, it's gonna be great. I, we did get on that topic, and I kind of went astray, like I usually do. Um, you know, it is gonna be great. There's a lot of people in this industry who really like are hating on it. Uh, because you can't do it yet, but like JPC is a great example of like what you can do on a stock tune. How fast they go, like 950s Nine with something. nitrous on like a stock tune? It's absolutely crazy. I feel like that market itself is going to be huge, but like people are just shit. Obviously, they hate it because they can't touch it, but like, you know, we talked about this earlier. You shouldn't be fucking talking shit. And like, 
<laughs> really going down that rabbit hole of us bullshitting people that don't buy us a fucking this and complains about the platform. This is how we make money. You know what I mean? This is our future. And we really need to be supportive of that. Because uh, Ford's listening. Ford's watching everything we do. When I made 1500 years ago on a Gen 3 for the first time, like 18, uh, a Ford engineer saw that and like t- was talked to somebody that I knew and was like, who the fuck is making this much power? And they're like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. The S650, I mean, they're... Do I like the body? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not really concerned about the body. I'm more, uh, you know, thinking about the motor type of thing. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I just yeah. recently took apart a Gen 4 um, for Texas Speed. They have some stuff coming out. Um, and I was very impressed with, you know, the internal side of the motor. And, like, I actually called Rob, like, right after I disassembled it and was like, which one do I need to buy, an F-150 or a Mustang? Because you, can, you can't you can tune the Mustangs yet. You can tune some F-150s, yeah. but you can't tune the Mustangs yet. So, I mean, he, you know, that, that's, like, the kind of relationship we have. Is I can call him and be like... Again, business advice. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't do... I mean, so many people are joining F-150s right now. It's like, well, you're a little late to the game, so... Yeah, yeah, but we'll yeah. wait so, on the 24 yeah. stuff, and that's coming. <laughs> so, like I told you on my podcast, like, whenever the, the Mustang stuff comes out and you can actually fiddle with it on the tune side... Oh, we're going like, crazy. It's... Going it's, crazy. It's going to be insane. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I mean, in, in my personal experience is the, like, it, on all the stuff I've done, it's it's not handing off a car to a tuner and just giving a moral record because obviously there's a lot of tuning that goes along with it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like, I, I just put together a car that's world, work, world record capable and then, um, you know, we tune it and then give the tuner the world record, give me the world record and all that stuff. And the motors on the Gen 4s, the blocks itself are like the crazy. The 50s, the Gen, the Gen, I call it Gen 3.5. It's right. close, but yeah. I mean, I think that, that, why not the Gen 4? Why don't you call them Gen the 4? The F-150 is a Gen 4. Well, I mean, it's still a Gen 4, yes, but it's a completely different engine than the Mustang has in the 24. Right. So all I've taken apart is an F-150 motor. And like just from what I've seen there is like it's incredibly better than what it used to be. So yeah, it's I mean, like you can go really fast on a Gen 4 F-150 or Gen 3. With, with Rods Pistons. Yeah, 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 with Rods of Pistons. You can go really fast with it, and it's, it's going to happen. There's people out there making it, such as Texas Speed. Um, and like there's, you know, in the right hands of, you know, the builder, driver, whatever, tuner, tuner, like it's going to be very, very fast. So it's very promising. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, uh, I mean, this generation of the 24, right. The we'll call 3.5 is a good generation. Uh, it's impressive for what it is. I mean, I've driven them with a the new ECU and the new control they have for the transit drives. Very nice. It's a really good driving car. Uh, I will say there's another generation coming but it depends on who you vote for, all right? Ford, Ooh, yeah. Ford knows they're either gonna, they're tooled up ready to make another generation. They want Damn. to, they would, they would love to make another generation of Coyote and they're ready to do it. They're tooling up for it. They're gonna spend that money, but it depends on what happens at the end of the year. I mean, if someone else gets in and they start pushing this green new deal bullshit, like they're gonna scrap the program because there's no way they could meet their car requirements with what they're trying to do. You know what yeah. I mean? So vote accordingly. Right. <laughs> well, Ford, Ford did come out and they posted that they're going to keep the combustion engine. They want to. I mean, like I said before, there is no such thing as electric. It's not going to last. You know, yeah. it, it's awesome. Tesla's are great, but the infrastructure is not there. Imagine you could roll up with a 500 horsepower V8 and throw water in that bitch and just keep driving. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. That's going to be great. If that is, a, I don't mean, I don't know how they're going to do it. That's how it happens. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, Listen, who knows? I'm going to look back on this five years from now and go, "Damn, was I right or wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Probably wrong." Okay. <laughs> So what did you notice the difference, like specifically difference on the... On the Gen 4s? On the, yeah. I mean, so like the block specifically, there's more uh, like the coolant passages. I mean, you had mm-hmm. spoken on it a little bit, but like the coolant passages are a little bit stronger uh, on the Gen 4s. So, I mean, obviously you can put more pressure through that cylinder. Yeah, the blocks are much better than the Gen 4 F-150. Right. I mean, the oil pumps are fucking hot daddy. They're like... Right. They're like an F-1 style Yeah, oil they're pump. very they're nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they definitely have potential to make horsepower for sure. And then the the cams too. Um, like I have it, I actually have it still sitting out there, and we were looking at it. It's like the cams. Um, like yeah, they're in they, a bed plate. Yeah, yeah. It's like it, it, almost like kind of how the Lambos are with the clamshells. Mm-hmm. Um, like so, the cams. Like I could literally, if I wanted to, I could take a custom grind set of cams, and then a, you know, two basically bring two sets of cams to the track. And basically, with the way they made it with the bed plate is that I can literally, while the motor's in the car, change the cams out and see, you know, I can, like, directly test cams at the track. Wow. Um, with Still the motor the car. Rob, that kind of sucks. But, yeah, you could it, theoretically it, it, it. would be a lot of work, but yeah. I mean, you could do it, it yeah. it's possible. Possible, And yeah. so, right now, with what we have, it's... I guess you could say it's possible, but it's not the not the easiest. Yeah, thing. no one wants to do that. That's a lot of cam bolts to take yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So like this one now, like the cams, caps, and everything are still attached, and literally just the cams. You take off the chains, and the cams come right out all together. Yeah. They didn't take any exhaust. Nice. So it's like I saw that when I was taking the motor apart for him, and I was like, "This is yeah. insane! Like this has a lot of potential." Just this alone yeah. took the heads off, saw the block, and I was like, "Oh, we can 
we can party. <laughs> yeah. With this. yeah, I mean, I, I know the Mustang doesn't have that. Uh, the I know the Coyote, the, the one in the current twenty four, doesn't have that. It probably will in the next generation if they do it. But I mean, like the, that generation itself right now, this new engine out is going to be, like I said before, I think it'll be very impressive. I think you'll see easy eight second Whipple cars all day long or turbo cars. Once tuning is unlocked, it's definitely going to be there. I mean, look at where we are right now, lethal. Yeah. Big shout out to my dad, lethal. <laughs> Lethalperformance.com, bro. That's my dad right there, Jared. My pops <laughs> taught me everything I know about being alive. Uh, he's got one. It's got a Whipple on it. And it made 840 wheel on a pump gas with long tubes on the Whipple tune that comes. It's 50 state legal. He's got long tubes on, obviously, but it's got you know their calibration because they're linked in with Ford and an 840 wheel on pump gas. Well, maybe a splash of octanium, sure, but like that's pretty achievable for anybody out there trying to make that kind of power, yeah. for sure. And uh, there's other people out there who've, Let's bring it back up again. Shit talks the industry. <laughs> this guy's this and fuck this and blah, blah, blah and all this crazy shit and this literally bad mouthing someone's progress or someone who's literally putting the money out to do something other people aren't doing first before anyone else, right? right? Got the first ripple off the assembly line. He's out there doing something no one else has done. Again, because he, he does it every time. That's how Lethal does it, bro. He literally does it the first. He's out there doing it before anybody else setting the path for the rest of the community, right? Yeah. And then you have this one person who just fucking runs amok, shit talking. It's so like a parasite. <laughs> it's yeah. a cancer. Yeah. Literally, yeah. it is ball cancer. Yeah. I feel a certain sort of way. I've been, I've read comments that I knew where these people had gotten their information from. And I go, well, that's fucking stupid. I go, listen, if you, I love everybody in the Mustang community. I love meeting everyone. If you ever see me at a race, say hi to me. I love that shit. But like the people who listen to this person, I hate the most. Yeah. <laughs> because you're just as fucking stupid as he is. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the shit that I hear is so wrong or so like just toxic. It just ruins this whole community we've built to make, you know what right, I mean? Like, right. And you try to, you, you bring, you bring down the community. Yeah. You make but a living. This bringing whole, down the community. you make a living off this shit. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what's going to happen when you don't have a job? You're just going to talk right. shit. No one's yeah, going to care. Gonna backfire, Your 500 right. viewers of live stream are really going to care. Like <laughs> I get fucking Instagram stories, to get more views and videos you've had up for fucking months. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. And like this shit is fucking nuts. Uh, it drives me up a fucking wall. I could go on and on. Yeah. Uh, fucking annoying this shit is and don't you say something because I got fucking all type of shit in my phone right now <laughs> trust me I'll yeah. put that shit on the pile I'll come back on and oh, hold up my fuck. phone with screenshots damn <laughs> not lying that's fucked damn, up not lying that's not fucked lying. up <laughs> not lying we got I receipts got, man I got good hey look when you yo, got, when you got I, receipts 4k not just receipts I got 4k receipts when you got 4k with receipts, the red receipts the only thing I gotta say today. is <laughs> the only thing I gotta say is Yo, don't let him lie to you He's seen the screenshots Alright, look at me He's seen the screenshots I did see They're the screenshots up. But When you got receipts There's no fucking around I can't yeah. even I couldn't make this show if I tried You can't yeah. fuck it around with Oof. that That's crazy That's definitely insane I love yeah. it here I love it <laughs> You know, this is getting fun Give me another beer I'm ready to have a good time I would love to know Like, the hard part for me is like I I I'm not really a person who like is ever doing anything like this, for yeah. example. And like, there's so much information that I know in my years of doing this. I'd love to know what people like would love to know or love to hear about me. I always think my backstory is something that like not many people know or why I do this or how I got here or whatever. But and, don't forget where you came from. Yeah, uh, being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Sorry, my to, sorry to cut you off, but you were at. Palm Beach Dino, correct? Palm Beach Dino, yes. I, I have to give those guys all the credit in the world. Like I said, I love those guys over there. They were my family. And together we built something very special. And unfortunately, you know, I had to leave for personal reasons. And that's it is what it is. Um, but like I said, I, there's nothing nothing bad I could say about those guys. They're great. I'm just a nice guy. I love everyone except that one person. <laughs> that, there's only one person I really hate in this industry. Uh, just one. So when, when you were at Palm Beach Dino, how was it? Was it uh, like a facility? Like so the, we had a, a facility. We had a dino shop. At the very end, we had an install shop and an attire alignment shop. And that was great. Uh, we, we were able to do, like we were having people said, brand, like he said, branded GT500s on a rollback, non-PDI, right? Doing full bolt on, you know, ported blowers, all that shit. Non PDI, it's got. Z I'm breaking this thing on in myself on the dyno, making yeah, yeah. 900 wheel on 93, right? 15 miles maybe on it max after we test drive right. it, putting it back on a rollback and shipping it overseas. You know, crazy Damn. shit like that. Right. Well, so I, I guess you had asked me this on the last pod <sighs> is the the break in procedure, right? Oh. So me personally, I send it right out the box. Same. Okay. So <laughs> the best. So I've done this one. I, I've my my. Uh, explanation, my theory of this comes from experience of doing it on engine dyno. We built boat engines a lot. When I was first started doing this, it was real big in the early, I'm sorry, early 2010 area, whatever, 2009, 2010. 
We did a lot of boat motors, and we would literally put them together, put on the engine dyno, and load it up. Watt, 4,000. Let the engine decel, right? Come back down. Bring it back down. 5,000. You do it a couple times, and you'd watch the vacuum gauge come back to idle. Keep moving more and more and more and more vacuum. And eventually, you'd hit like 14 inch pounds of vacuum, and boom, engine Damn. sealed. And you could break an engine in an hour, and you're done, and we're making watt hits, baby. Right. So I do the same thing today on the dyno. A fresh engine, I'll put it in maybe like high gear, low boost, Wad into it, let it make sure everything looks good. 5,000 lift, let engine decel come back down. That's like, right? I mean, do I'm, it again. He's not the only person, but I've had other tuners too, like uh, Dylan or whatever. Um, like, they, they, there's a lot of guys with the same mindset, and it's not, uh, I guess you could say, like, it's, a, I call it scientific. It's, like, it's not a common right. uh, thing that everybody thinks of. Like, obviously, you know, like guys, they want to drive for 3,000 miles on 93 octane, all that stuff. That doesn't help. Yeah. I'm going to give you a scenario, right? So, when I change an engine on the airplane, because that's what I do. Ooh, that's great. Right? There's no break-in period. No, there isn't. On, and then, you know, you, know, you have the, the, the turbo fans and, you know, right. well, and well, stuff like right. that. And obviously, this is higher mm -hmm. fucking shit than of combustion. But when after they come from rebuild, right, we throw all the oils at it, um, hydraulics, all these kinds of shit, and we go high power. Immediately. Right off the fucking gate. Yeah, right. sure. You know, we do an idle. Third gear. <laughs> yeah. The, the thrust is at idle, and right. then we take it out. We do, like, maybe 10 minutes of high power and mm -hmm. take it to Toga. Load that shit up, right. Yeah. And well, it's the same it theory is. that I'm going to explain it's here. It's the same thing. So, like, yeah, think about, yeah. like, how an engine works, right? For those of you at home, how's the engine work? You probably don't know. I'm going to explain it to you. The piston itself is here, right? And how's the, how's the piston ring work? Right? Compression comes from the cylinder, it comes down in behind the ring, it pushes it against the wall. So if you want to bed that bad boy into the, the cylinder wall, how do you do it? Yeah. You need load, right? So you need cylinder pressure. That's how you bed rings in. It's like brakes. You put brakes in your car, do you just not fucking stop? Yeah. Right. You're just yeah. like, oh, I'm not going to stop because these brakes are brand new. What wrong. the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, you go out and you <laughs> fucking break on that motherfucker real yeah. hard. Yeah. Really, you do like some stoppies in that bitch real yeah. hard. Right. And then guess what? Done. Same thing. Yeah. What's yeah. the old saying? If you like beat it, like it doesn't owe you no know, money, it lasts forever. Or right. It was run like hard, that. run it's hard. Like, I guess the old saying. I guess obviously I work with a lot of older guys with right, older cars, and they yeah, you got to meet them for the first time. Yeah. Um, it's like it's weird to say it because it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But it's like trans fluid or something. It's like or I wouldn't say trans fluid. Maybe diff fluid. It's like if you've never changed it, don't change it. Leave yeah. it alone. Yeah. It's like as soon if it as you broke, change don't it, fix it. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. If, as soon as you change it, you're gonna have problems. Yeah. It's, it's so, happens every time. Yeah. It's just it's I, like this shit actually used to happen with Toyota. They would come in with a high mile draft four is a great example and like sixty thousand on it and like oh they want to do a trans service. I go why? Because they they want to trans fluid. I go why? <laughs> <laughs> I go, I'd love to do this. You know why? Do a trans service, brand new fluid, a month later, needs a trans. <laughs> Damn. Right. So it's every like time, you, bro. It's like on Marth or whatever. It's like, obviously, every single time I take the car out, I change the trans fluid, I change the motor fluid. You know, I, I leave the rear end alone. But, um, like, it, it, unless you start from the get-go, you know, changing fluid like that, you don't want to do that whenever it's it's got a lot of miles on it. Yeah, it's true. That's true. I mean, obviously, in a racing industry, you're going to service things every time right, you do it, right? Right. right? Or racing, whatever the fuck. Right. But on the daily drivers, whatever. Yeah, you just leave it alone, Leave bro. it alone. <laughs> Although Tanner Radies are not that way. Tanner Radies right. are just junk to begin with, so just, like, you know, don't even buy one. <laughs> so, so, um, so, beyond the Mustangs and the Ford stuff like that, I've seen it, you've, We've texted about it, but you also deal with a lot of exotic stuff. You actually do like a lot of rally. Oh, the like rally that. life. Yeah. yeah. I was just on a rally um, in November. So we went to F1. Oh, this is a good fucking story. Okay. So it's, it was called the supercar rally, right? And I'm calling it the fucking fire rally because it was a goddamn nightmare. Like we got scammed out of like 15 grand. The short end of it is like, so my buddy Mike hit me up one day. He said, yo, we're going to do this rally. It's from Miami to Vegas. And we're going to get F1. And basically what we were promised was like a rally to Vegas. And then we would do Red Bull hospitality suite. Right. And you'd be mm. in the Red Bull box basically for the race, which, you know, obviously if you, you F1 stuff is expensive. And yeah, I, yeah. I love all forms of racing. You know, I love cars. Like so of course, I mean, I go to Miami F1 every year. So, you know, of course I'm going to go. It's the first one in Vegas. And you know, I love Vegas. So we decided to go, right? It's 15 grand, a lot of money. The first day in, we leave from like, oh, let me start. For the Thursday night. So, oh, Jesus Christ, this is a fucking story. <laughs> Thursday night, we get down there into Miami, all right? And we go to the supercar rooms, whatever the fuck it's called, okay? And this isn't, it's in like Wynwood area, but it's like, there's a gate around this facility, and there's like, I, we should open a 720S McLaren, put it that way. I'm in a fucking McLaren, there's McLarens everywhere, there's Lambo, shit like that. And it's in a gated f f facility, and there's people out front shooting heroin. I was like, yeah, this is fucking up. This is going to turn out <laughs> to be perfect. This is going to be great, right? 
the next morning we end up doing the, the beginning of the rally. So that, that starts good, right? So we go, um, uh, we, we leave at the Hard Rock Hotel in South Florida. We go all the way to Atlanta. We stop at McLaren and Titusville up there. We have lunch, whatever. That's fine. We get to Atlanta. That's cool. Mind you, I'm on this rally with like a good friend of my mic, these two other girls that I met, Gabby and Taylor, and uh, Ben and his wife, and Tom King, and the DDE guys were there, Damon and Dave. Don't know why they were on this rally, but they really regretted it by the end, for sure. <laughs> DDE? DDE. Daily Driven Exhaust? Daily okay. Driven Exhaust. Got you, the, got you. My homies right there, Dave and, Damon and Dave. The, I love those guys. They're straight Gs, bro. Nice. Awesome dudes. Um, Atlanta. We get to Atlanta. Everything's fucking peachy, bro. It's great. We all have drinks that night. When we got there late, it's a lot of driving. So we, we get, we're partying and drinking, whatever. We go to sleep. We wake up at 6 to leave again. Today's date is, is what is it, Saturday now? Sorry, Saturday. So today, we're going from Atlanta to Memphis, Tennessee. All right, we're have it stopping at the racetrack over there in Bristol, Tennessee area, the fucking NASCAR track, to drive our, our, our exotics on the track. Because this is what we're promised, Rocco. Right. Remember that. <laughs> we're driving, everything's cool. He's not telling us where we're staying at. He's not telling us, you know, the directions. We're in our own pack. We split off with just the people that we like, DDE, those guys. And um, we get to the track, and I see this big fucking sign out front that says, rent supercars. And I go, Mike, wouldn't it be fucking hilarious? If like we roll in here and a bunch of exotics and they go, do you want to run an exotic to drive around the track? <laughs> sure shit enough, we can't drive our cars on the track. You got to pay $500 to drive a fucking stock GTR around the track. I came here in a McLaren 720. I just did 200 miles an hour on the way here. What the fuck <laughs> are you offering me, right? <laughs> We also like a group of us split off the DD, you know, the, um, yeah. whatever. We go to Nashville for lunch, all that's hunky dory, right? We're going to head to Memphis now. Okay, this is where it gets fucking good. We go to head, head to Memphis, and we're like maybe like an hour and a half, two hours outside of Memphis. And I'm hitting this mother. We're all hitting this guy up in the chat. Where the fuck's our hotel? No one knows where we're at. Tom had already driven into Memphis. He's in Memphis. This isn't where we're going. And finally, one of the girls who was running the show or helping him run the show, this guy Elo, sent me a text. And, oh, this is the address of the hotel. Sure. Okay. Well, it's not Memphis. It's Robinsonville, Mississippi. If you've never been there, I highly recommend not going. <laughs> the, the Hollywood Hotel. Okay. We roll in this motherfucker. And I'm like, this can't be right. Four people were murdered in the parking lot the night before. It's oh, wow. am amazing. Damn. What a great facility. Wow. Mind you, I could smell the cigarette smoke from outside. Oh, wow. Like, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, I'm bougie because I am white trash at the end of the day, right? I, 100%, <laughs> I'll tell you straight up, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Even I walked in and I was like, absolutely fucking not. Like, it was like $68 a night to stay there. And I was like, bro, what's happening right now? Like, here we are in these, we got like, a, you know, millions of dollars in fucking supercars, right? Like, yeah. we're just rolling in there. The one girl, I get out of the car and this girl, Jenna comes up, she's like, uh, take your watch off before you go inside. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, they'll probably take it from you, take oh, it wow. off. And I was like, oh shit, okay. Damn, wow. Noted, right? So we get in there. $15,000 trip. Yeah, it was really bad. 15 grand, right? Really bad, you know, that, if anybody's ever seen the video on uh, the internet, when Gas Monkey shared it, DD shared it, where we had some concerns and one of the gentlemen, Marcos, uh, expressed his concerns to Elo about this. He comes up to our dinner, which was, first of all, fucking garbage, uh, unedible. <laughs> $89 steak is like prime. It literally tasted like, uh, uh, it was probably pigeon. It was fucking disgusting. One bite, I was like, I'm not fucking eating this, right? Like, it was disgusting. And I'm not trying to be bougie. I'm right. just saying it's fucking disgusting. Yeah, if yeah. You, 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 trust me, you don't understand. Anyway, he comes upstairs and starts screaming at everyone, right? I saw that video. Screaming. And like Mark, like he gets in Marcus's wife's face and Marcus stands up. Marcus is like a black bound jiu-jitsu who runs jiu-jitsu tournaments. I'm like sitting there drinking. I'm drinking, obviously. And I'm like giddy like a fucking schoolgirl. I'm like, this guy's going to murder this motherfucker <laughs> right now. And I'm like, I can't wait to see this shit happen, yeah. right? He stands up, gets in his face. I was like, yo, hit him. Hit him. I'm screaming. I'm fucking amped up, ready to go. And uh, they're basically screaming back and forth at each other. And like, it, you'll see that video. I mean, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure you'll yeah. find it eventually. It's out there of him screaming everyone. It went viral, I'm pretty sure. It's where it started, right there. The next morning, first of all, I slept in the bathtub, okay? I, I look at the bed and I was like, if I sleep in this, I'm going to get HIV. There's no, oh, wow. there's no way that I'm not getting a fucking hiv out of this God bad boy. Damn. Slept in the bathtub. We wake up, we go downstairs, we corner this dude, all of us in the rally, and try to figure out what the fuck's going on, right? We're like basically interrogating this guy. We're, I mean, we're screaming at this guy. My buddy Mike is the best. He's literally like, my rally. And Mike's like, hold on, shut the fuck up. And just starts <laughs> going off. And literally like, literally goes, this is my rally now. And just ruins everything this guy had going for him. Basically, we figured out we don't have any tickets to F1. We're not going to the Red Bull fucking hospitality suite. Damn. None of this is actually what we paid for. It's all bait and switch, right? 
And uh, basically, we make a list of demands and we're splitting off, and he kind of meets those demands to an extent. The next day, we drove to Dallas. He did provide a McLaren dinner at the headquarters of McLaren, where we saw, what's his name? Who owns TX2K? Uh, Peter. Peter. He was there. Peter Block said, what's with the DD guys? He was there, you know, chilling or whatever. That was all right. <laughs> the fucking next hotel. Oh, it was like Albuquerque, New Mexico, and that was a shithole, bro. That was... So you went from Dallas to Albuquerque. Yeah, which New makes Mexico. zero sense, right? Right. Damn. We fi- drive. No, it's, yeah. dude, and then we went to Albuquerque to Vegas, right? We finally get into Vegas, and we're staying at the Virgin Hotel, which is not, it's not... I'm not a fan of it. It's not that bad, but I'm not a huge fan of it. We don't have F1 tickets. Mind you, $15,000. So right now, I'm like adding it up. I'm like, we're $500 in hotel rooms for me. Where's my other like $14,500? Because I don't have a ticket, right? Or anything like that. I'm not going to the race. So we basically almost beat the shit out of him outside the fucking <laughs> Virgin Hotel. Uh, I had like, my camera up. There's a video of me like ready to fight this guy. It was, it was really bad. We're all yeah. waiting. To get, he's going to get jumped. Like this dude. And you're not the only person. How many people were on this rally? Uh, 18, 20 or something like that. It was bad. 15,000, 18, 20 Ooh, people. This he dude, came, hey, I just got to say, he Homeboy came walked up. around, oh, yeah. walked out up. with like a hundred grand. Like it was nothing and probably spent 20. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> in the end, so like we get to the race and whatever. First of all, he hit our 15,000 only paid for the first night. Tuesday night, into Wednesday of F1. We had to foot the bill for the rest. Wow. wow. F1 weekend. Imagine how much money I'm spending on a hotel room, right? And you had other good rally experiences besides For sure. Shows. Savage Rally, best rally on the fucking planet, bro. I've been on, going on a Savage Rally in April. Uh, Jason runs a phenomenal rally, okay? So this wasn't the normal No, rally. I've been on rallies. Mind you, I had just driven a fucking 720S McLaren from fucking Miami all the way to Vegas. My ass is sore. I'm <laughs> numb. I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's upset. I haven't had a good night's sleep in fucking days. Come to find out, this dude ended up buying like 80 tickets to uh, some shithole fucking bar. What the hell is the place called? Uh, Cabo Wabo, right? It's not a bad bar. I don't want to say that it's bad at all. But he bought 80 tickets to the upstairs of Cabo Wabo, sold 40, got 40 tickets, right? Gave us the other 40. Yeah. It was open bar. It was, uh, you know, a catered. And that food was good. Everyone was super nice. Those people were great. Not faulting them at all. I pay for the Red Bull hospitality suite. I didn't get it. So we're all pissed <laughs> off, okay? Uh, we had a good time. I mean, basically, I just did what I do. I make the best of every situation. When I right. got drunk with the TD guys and partied, and we went to all the nightclubs that I know and had a fucking ball over time. But basically, I got scammed at 15 grand. End up, like, he disappeared halfway through, like, Vegas. We never saw him again. I couldn't find him. And he, we, we charged back. And I got my money back, thankfully. So I got to go for free. Nice. But that was, like, the experience from fucking hell, bro. It was one of the worst. If, if I had not had the group of people, like DDE and Taylor and Gabby and Mike and all these great people on this rally with me, it would have been a fucking nightmare. Yeah. I'd have been, I'd have flown home. I'd have been like, you know what? Take, take the car. We're leaving. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> you go report it stolen. I'm flying back. It was so bad. Guys, you got to be careful with these, you know, scumbags. Scammers. Even scammers, I can scammers, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, that they was probably my fault. I don't know too far you know? There's a lot of scammers out here. Yeah. But no, I, I remember seeing that on Instagram and on the stories. And I was, uh, I had texted him and was like, you know, what happened? And he was like, oh, we're doing an interview. It's going to come out. Yeah. TD um, was going to do it, but I don't think they're going to do it. I mean, we don't want to sit here and shit talk everyone. Just kidding, kind of do. <laughs> I definitely kind of do. Um, I mean, this dude has been chased out of Europe into Florida and he like basically scammed over like a bunch of dudes in Europe and then he fucked over a guy from Gas Monkey and then he fucked everyone else over this rally, including the guys from DDE who were probably the nicest dudes I've ever met in my life. Damn, Super man. nice guys, right? Like, they were pissed. They went home a day early because they were like, fuck this, dude. We're getting ripped off. Like, we're yeah, out of here. Sure. And uh, crazy. it was a great experience being able to hang out with them. And like, like I said, everyone else on this rally and having a great time with everyone and making new friends and, you know, networking and shit like that. That's fun. But without them, I'd have beat the living brakes <laughs> off this fucking dude. I'd so, be in jail right now. So beyond all that, though, like the rallies, do you view it as a, like a vacation or do you view it as like a networking opportunity? It's both. I mean, right. I love doing the rallies because you're hanging out with some of the coolest people I ever meet, too, because they're yeah. just like you. Straight scumbags. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we're fucking busting ass I wouldn't down call you a scumbag. Too, I, mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> we're, like, um, we're in Mexico, <clears throat> exceeding the speed limit by 100 miles an hour for fun all day long. You know, going as fast as possible from one location to another, right? In Mexico. Mind you, Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Sure, whatever. And it's fun. You're dipping cars and, you know, with exotics going 180, 170 miles an hour as fast as possible, trying to get to the next location before anyone else. That's just fun. Yeah. And you're only going to meet, like, really good like to my, in my experience i've only met really good people in that situation nice yeah. except for elo which i hope <laughs> i hope he dies so <laughs> he deserves it yeah yeah he I, came up I, man right. 
Just hearing your story, I'm thinking like, dang, he came up a lot. Like hey, oh 15 yeah. by 18. So, I have a question. So I'll tell you this question. Whenever it comes with the, the rally stuff like that, and you're talking about 170, 180 miles an hour, mm -hmm. how do you avoid the police on that? Oh, so <clears throat> I don't want to give them all my The Federales. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Uh, the Federales, they got some <laughs> shitty cars. Um, <laughs> it's just a point. You pass them and you just keep going because there's no way they're going to Basically, yes. Uh, yes and no. Um, we do run a network of uh, devices. Right, right? right. We're running radars. We're running apps. We're running scanners. We're running everything. We got people in front of us, you know, telling us. So it's, the same, it's the same thing as like. Street racing. Basically, yeah. it's the same form. It's just it's just the rich people version of it. <laughs> right, right. It's the rich people version of street us. racing. Yeah, it's it's a good time, man. Honestly, it's we have a lot of fun and uh, it's a good like, like you're rallying all day. Get you to the next location and then there you are at the bar with everyone you just rally with all day. You're like homies, pounding yeah. drinks down, knowing you're gonna wake up at seven o'clock in the morning doing it again. Damn, it's crazy. It's a good time. It's levels. F1 was sick. I would definitely recommend going. Uh, I had a good time. I literally was at SEMA like a week before, and then I literally flew home for like three days and then back on the rally back to <sighs> Las Vegas. I wish I love it there so much. I really do. <laughs> you ever been to Vegas? Yeah, yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, I went for work. So you didn't go anywhere? Nah, I didn't go. For what the fuck, I man? Didn't, I didn't go. Yo, Vegas is great, bro. Like, yeah. Vegas, it's got some Have great Have you tried um, Gordo Tacos? Gordo Taco, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Dude, you do everything out there. They got all the good food. The 24 yeah. hour ramen spots, bro. My buddy Eric, uh, uh, one of the coolest I've ever met in my entire life. Eric is a, is a DJ out there, resident DJ. That's cool. Like, dude, we go out there and have a fucking ball. Yeah. Any advice to those who want to get into tuning a car? And then the second question is those, uh, any advice for those who's building their car? I mean, this is a great question, actually. Yeah, Let me think about this for a second. <clears throat> as far as tuning, I mean, if you're freshly getting into it, I mean, I'm sure it's definitely. A lot of the lower people that I'll see, uh, like the lower, I'm going to call them lower tier, the lower tier people that I'll see, the new, newbies or whatever, the green dudes, the plebs, <laughs> they have jobs. You know what I mean? They don't do this full time. I do this as a fucking living, right? This is how I make money. Well, it's not exactly how I make money personally, but like I make money from this and I'm good at it. I've been doing it for so long. That's how I made money for a long time. And this is why like I know exactly what the fuck I'm doing. Would I recommend doing it now? Probably not. Uh, if, if I did give any advice, I would say take your time. You know, there's a lot that to learn for sure. There's a lot of mistakes you're going to make. And you know, don't be afraid to ask questions sometimes. Like, I've actually, like, reached out to, like, when I was first tuning, um, I had made friends with this guy, Dasan. He used to work for Lund. Rest in peace, Dasan. Right. Great, great dude. He was very nice and very, like, he would always give me uh, good words of affirmation, you know what I mean, and good advice and stuff like that, and he was really good. So if you ask someone for help, you know, I, I help people all the time. I help people that I don't even tune or aren't even customers. I help other tuners tune cars. People reach out to me who've been tuning cars who ask questions, and I have no problem answering them because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to take food from anyone else. This market's big enough for everybody. If you can find your niche in it, go for it. Nice. I think that's the big one, honestly. For find sure. Find your niche. Find your niche. If you can find your niche and you can have that target. Yeah, like I got really good at this because I was obsessive about this. But if you're good at cooking, like go after it. If you're good at building cars, you, you're you passionate about something. Some people say don't turn a passion into a job. And I would agree with that to a certain extent. But like I do love what I do. Uh, it allows me to do everything that I want to do in life. And I've been so blessed. Um, I look back right now. I, I'm From a kid that I was, you know, 15 years ago to the t where I am today, I would never believe you if you told me. Um, this route that I've taken in my life and the hard work that I've put in personally, like I'm extremely grateful that I'm sitting here today because I could have fucked up somewhere and not been here, but nice. the right kind of things happened along the line and, you know, here, here we, we are. are. Right. Cheers. 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 Cheers for it, Cheers. Right? Uh, so what about, would you recommend them, coming from a tuner, yeah. would you recommend them the tuning school? Tuning school is a good way. Uh, I mean, Bob Morreale over there runs a good program. Um, I do consulting for the elite, elite Tuning School. Those guys are awesome. They have a couple Ford courses, which I, uh, I helped out on. Um, there's definitely ways to learn there. I've definitely given up a bunch of information there to help people. Um, mostly from my experience, some things, you know, is it the way that Ford would have done things? Probably not, but there's a million ways to skin a cat, right? There's ways that are the right way to do it. And there's ways that are like, yeah, that works. And then there's ways like, why, why would you do this? Yeah. We definitely kept those ones out of there <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But there's definitely, you know, a lot of information out there. The tuning school is a good one or Elite tuning school is another great one. In fact, they actually asked me if I would teach an in-person course. Uh, I think it's like a six week course. Maybe I could be mistaken, but they asked me if I would do in person courses a couple times a year, and I'm down for it. Like I, I love what I do, and I have no problem telling anyone what I do or how I do it or teaching people. I mean, I'm a big fan of it. What about building 
like if they're building their car? Advice they're building the car? Yeah. Well, I have tons of advice. I mean, if you're going to build a car and you want to know a combination, ask me first. If you want me to tune it, right. you know, hey, Rob, I'm thinking about doing this. I'm going to give you a, a plot of what to do and the right way to do it because, like, I've seen guys come in. Hey, I got this blower. I got these injectors. Oh, why did you buy these injectors? They don't work with us. Oh, okay, well, and then they kind of backtrack and you're spending money twice. Whereas if you just like ask, if you're dead set on me tuning a car and you have a goal in mind of what you're doing, first of all, if you're building a car, have a goal in mind, right? This is what I want the car to do. This is what I want to do with the car. And this is what I expect out of the car, right? These big three, three questions, which are kind of the same, but they're all similar, right? I forgot one. What's the one? The budget. And your budget. Right, yeah, budget budget's is a great one. If you got $6, don't call me. Without, without <laughs> budget, you ain't got shit. <laughs> yeah, if you ain't got budget, you ain't got fucking nothing. <laughs> have, your, have your budget in mind and what you can afford. And be realistic with yourself yeah. because like everyone's like, oh, I want to run eights on motor. I'm like, do you have 50 grand? I've got $7. I go, well, that's not going to get you down the street, my boy. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So obviously have that in mind. And then you can literally ask me, if you want me to tune your car, I say, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing this. I'd like to build an 850 index car, wherever the fuck it might be. I'm going to give you a, a couple options that I think will be viable for you in your scenario and lead you down the path of the best success I could possibly give you because I've done it before. I've done it 100 times, and I'm happy to like give that knowledge on to you and help you have a program that's successful, right? I do a couple people with 860 index, right? It's another great... Letitia Hughes built this course, or um, this course, fuck, this whole uh, class, 860 index, NMRA, and it really, it started off kind of rough, and then right now you've got a, a bunch of people running it, right. and it's a really good course, it's a really good uh, class because it's a street car, 860 index, you're not heads up racing, so you're not having to make a million horsepower, right, you can make a thousand and run the cor uh, class, and you know, stuff like that, and I'm happy to do that kind of shit. We know you got the, the new website, right? You got yep. the... Yep, new website, shoemakerperformance.com. Shoemaker Performance. Guys, if you're out there and you're watching the podcast, make sure you, if you want to get your car tuned, any advice or anything, make sure you check out the shoemakerperformance.com. For sure. What's the, So what's the future for you? Uh, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I mean, I have other things in my life that I'm working on that aren't car related. Um, cause this is a long-term thing for me, obviously I love doing what I'm doing, but God knows what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Right. Yeah. I don't want to be like one of them old dudes who's like hanging on doing Fox bodies cause I don't know anything else, uh, and making no money. Obviously there's other ways to make money in the world. And you know, I will do cars. I will tune coyotes until I obviously get sick of it and I just can't do it anymore. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. That's for sure. Do you own a personal coyote? Coyote? I have a 21 F-150 with a whipple on it. Oh, you have a what? Uh, 21 F-150, 5 liter with a Whipple. Okay. Uh, shout out to Dusty for that Whipple, by the way. Love you, baby. <laughs> the thing runs hard. It's a quad cab. It makes 650 wheel. You know, it's a great daily drive. I tow my boat with it. I love it. Nice. I've had a couple of Mustangs over the years. Um, I had, the last one I really had, the new one was a 16. You had the black Fox body, right? The I had a couple of Fox bodies over time, that's for yeah. sure. I've had a lot of Fox bodies in my life. I'm a Fox body guy, honestly. Like, I'm through and through. Like, I'm old school. Fox guy or Ford guy, if you will say. Coop. Small buck Ford, yeah. Coop. I'm a hatch guy, honestly. Uh, Fuck, notches, uh, yeah. Notches been great, right? I mean, my Fuck, first car was a 93 yeah. Ford. First car, 93 Ford cylinder hatch. Okay, I built a I built. I'm sorry, I built an engine with my father for that car. Five liter, swapped it over, five speed. I did that shit with my dad. I love that car to death. Um, I've always been. This is my first car, right? I do love notches. They make great race cars. They look beautiful when they're done right. Hatches are great street cars. I love new edges. Two thousand Cobra is my favorite Mustangs ever made. I love all that shit. But like, I am an old school Ford guy. Damn. Hands down. I fucking love the little booties. Yeah, man, they, they look so good from the back. Oh, man. Sick. That's like my favorite Fox. That's, yeah. that's what I got as a, as a coupe. Yeah, they're 90, good, they're good race cars, man. Coupe. For sure. They're awesome race cars. <laughs> yeah. This has been a they're phenomenal. Fucking, they're fucking high. They're going more up in price. Oh, dude, it's fine. I got one. Like, you want to buy it? Huh? I got one. You want to buy it? Damn. <laughs> well, anyways, besides that. <laughs> nah, but honestly, though, like, if you get a, like a, a good 50 condition. Grand. 50 grand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they become the next 69 Mustang, right? That's where, that's where we're getting at. And so yeah. the new edges will be the same way, sadly. I mean, Cobras are getting 40, 50 grand. So. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've actually had my hands on some 2000 Cobra R's. Really? And like, I, I'm surprised it's, it's such, your favorite car. It, that's one of my favorite cars because it's just like a, it's like a piece of shit. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's different though because the guys who own it, they hold on to them yeah. and, they, and they want so much for 120 them. grand, bro, for an NA four valve Mustang. Right? I mean, like, right. but it's a one of 300 car. It's a road race car with a one off five, four dual overhead cam, Oliver rods, forge pistons, all that good shit. You know, I mean, 385 horsepower ain't nothing. I mean, they make more than that obviously, yeah. but that like at that time of 2000 was pretty fucking cool. Yeah. You know? At the time.
Any last words, uh, Boyd? No, I mean, I'm, I, I'm appreciative you came out here. This is, this is dope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, coming all the way from Cali, I've never, Cali, For sure. Cali. I've never done a, a podcast before, and I hope right. you have me back one day, and we'll uh, we'll have a, a round two and talk some more shit, hopefully, in <laughs> the future. If they get rowdy out there, the receipts are coming out, I'm just going to say. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that, so bro. There's, there's a gotta, lot of untold stuff that you gotta we did not divulge into. Listen, I've only had three medals. If I had three more, <laughs> it'd be really bad. Really? Like, bang, bang, bang. No. Yeah, yeah, let's do it right now. So, yeah, it, it could it could get wicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well, Rob, cool. we appreciate you coming out. No, it's been a pleasure, you know, man. man. Um, badass shop. Yeah, awesome. I love it here. I love coming to see Boyd. I mean, it's uh, one of my favorite things to do in Texas for sure. Yeah. Shout out to Boyd. Shout out to the Bomberis family for letting us, you know, in the shop again. Can say it enough. I can't think. I just I say it all the time. I speak right, but um, but yeah, appreciate it and glad to have you on. Yes, sir. Glad for you to be here. Um, thank you for tuning in to Go Hard Podcast. Let's go party. <laughs> Make sure you follow Go Hard Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're also on TikTok. You can find us, the audio on uh, Spotify, Apple. Check out Boyd on Instagram. D don't add his Facebook, right? Yeah, don't add my Facebook. Don't <laughs> add his Facebook. Uh, and TikTok. Instagram, TikTok. The Tune Maker. At the underscore Tune Maker, yep. Rob Shoemaker on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Yep. Do you have a TikTok? I don't have a TikTok, bro. I'm sorry. All right, it's fine. <laughs> I'm too old. For, I'm, I'm a boomer now. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you follow him and check out shoemakerperformance.com for what, what can they find there? Your tunes? Yeah, I have all my tuning. If you want to buy Everything. the sweet hat that I'm wearing, I only have like seven left, so you better hurry up. Yeah. Uh, you know, tuning basically is all I got. So come and get it. Boom. Thank you guys and peace.